one of the most effective interventions you can find on the market, on the legal open market, to help manage inflammation, anxiety, improve sleep, and even potentially reduce your risk of cancer are cannabinoids. That's right. Cannabinoids now have mounting evidence that they uh, produce some pretty incredible effects in the body. Here's the challenge. When you buy cannabinoid-based products like CBD oils, for example, or hemp oil products, they're not regulated and oftentimes you're not getting efficacious doses. That being said, when you do find a good brand, um, this stuff has medicinal effective properties. It's pretty amazing stuff, especially now that you're looking at the now that we're looking at the the science that's coming out. So um, this was something I read about a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot back in the day. Adam, you remember this is how you and I first got. Um, you know, even before we started Mind Pump, you and I connected over this. Um, I had a family member, some, someone very, very close to me. This was probably, I want to say nine or 10 years ago now, who uh, was battling terminal cancer. And the, it was terminal. The doctor told him it was term, terminal. It was this type of stomach cancer that, um, that had like the survival rate was like 3%. And there was nothing available to help. So I scoured the internet for animal studies on anything that could potentially do anything at all. I was desperate. And I would stay up all night reading. And then I found um, research on cannabinoids. There was this one study that was done on rats with multiform gli glioblastoma. So I think it's a type of brain cancer. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And a Spanish researcher um, exposed the, the mice to high doses of cannabinoids, THC in particular, and their survival rate went through the roof. And this just you know, promoted all these other studies on cancer cells. And then I found an old study, 1974 government study on um, cannabis where they were trying to link it to lung cancer. They actually halted the study because they saw that it might have a reverse effect. So like, we don't want this getting out. Was it the seventies? They stopped all this research. Well, when it became, yes, when the war on drugs really kicked up um, and they classified it um, as a, what's that? There's like schedule one, schedule one. Yeah. <clears throat> you couldn't, it was so almost impossible to study for anything other than its potential negative effects. Right. So it yeah. was impossible. But um, it's pretty remarkable. And so as I went down this rabbit hole, trying to help my family member and all that, um, I learned about the endocannabinoid system. That's our body's natural cannabinoid system. So we produce cannabinoids um, that are similar to the ones found in the hemp plant or in the, for example, the marijuana plant. And we have these receptors that cannabinoids attach to that are some of the most abundant receptors in the body. They're like everywhere. And then I started learning about their function. And one of the functions of these receptors is to produce uh, balance, homeostasis. I've, been, mm. I've heard it being compared to like a, like a dimmer on a light switch. So you'll see studies where people have an immune system that's overactive and it helps bring it down. And then other studies where people have an underactive immune system where it brings it up. It doesn't block inflammation like NSAIDs do. And there's some negative effects of that, right? If you take too many NSAIDs, joints start to break down. Muscle recovery slows down. You start, actually start to see injury risk increase because you need some inflammation as a signaling um, uh, process. But it doesn't block inflammation. It modulates it. It just yeah. makes it more balanced and appropriate. Same thing with sleep and uh, anxiety and all these other things. So really remarkable stuff. And you can, uh, THC is the most you know widely known cannabinoid. That's the one that is abused, that has these kind of effects on our psyche. There may be some, some benefits there, but it's all these other cannabinoids that don't make you high, that have also some pretty incredible... So you can literally use these cannabinoids, not get high, be like totally fine, maybe just feel more relaxed or a little bit better, but get all these uh, pretty amazing uh, benefits. Now, how do you, how do you reconcile um, you know, the, the point where there was hardly any studies around this. Um, and then all of a sudden uh, it becomes popular and now tons of stuff is getting researched around this. And there's tons of advertising and marketing around all these different benefits that it does. How do you sift through all the different things that it, it, it supposedly can do for our body that's positive and know what to take is like, Oh, that's, that's of real value right there. Oh, the, cause you know, that's, this is the hard part about <clears throat> our space is that we tend to do this. We've done this with branch chain amino acids. We've, I've seen it done with creatine. I've seen it done with protein powders. I've seen it done with anything that it ha shows that it has some weight. Like, oh, there's some value there. 
And then as soon as the market recognizes that there it's it is marketable, they go and, crazy. And they go crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so so how do you, as somebody who loves to read all the research and stuff on all these things, sift through that and go like, okay, yeah, it does that, but it's like you know, I'm not going to take it for those reasons because let's be honest. No, you're right because you had you know CBD shampoo, CBD right. infused See, socks, yeah. like just toothpaste. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it just got. And then on top of it, because it's an unregulated space, does it have CBD? Does it not? What about the other cannabinoids? Probably not. Mm -hmm. There's like this wide range of products on the market where you could take something. And here's what happens uh, oftentimes with with what things like like you're saying, Adam, is they'll be like, oh, this is really this really works. But then the market is flooded with a bunch of fake right. stuff. People or, try it. They're like, it never worked for me. Right. It doesn't mm -hmm. work. Um, but to your question, there's a couple things that I look at. One is when there's something new and there just aren't, isn't a lot of studies behind it. First, I look at uh, old anecdote. Like, okay, what have people right. been saying for a long time? And then can I find any studies to support this at all? Are there cultures that have implemented this for you know hundreds of years? Yeah. So like cannabinoids, for, you know, culturally, um, in different populations, <laughs> anecdotally has been widely used for what? Um, anxiety, sleep, and pain. Those are the most common appetite, uh, and also appetite stimulation in some you throw cases. creativity in there. Yeah. Well, and then, and then, yeah, there's lots of anecdote <clears throat> with creativity, right? Some people will say it makes them more creative. Um, so I would go there and then I would look at studies to kind of support that. But then if I'm just looking at studies, I want to see, do we have more than one study supporting the same thing? Do we understand the mechanisms? And then um, let's take it from there. But the things that I that that I just listed, <clears throat> like uh, pain modulation, um, we have a lot of evidence now to show that it 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 probably these cannabinoids probably help uh, quite a bit through the way that we experience pain, uh, which is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. It's different than your traditional painkiller. So it's like you, you use cannabinoids and you get like the strong painkiller effect you just tend to notice the pain less. Um, and in combination with painkillers, for example, there's some studies that show that people that use cannabinoids, uh, non-THC cannabinoids, along with opiates, use less opiates mm. and they get the same um, uh, you know, kind of benefit. Um, sleep, uh, anxiety, it's got enzeolytic effects. There's a lot of evidence um, that's showing stuff like that. And then there's some like, you know, interesting stuff that's out there. Like, there's a lot of cannabinoids, right? There's one called CBC. I think it's cannabichromine, I think is uh, the full name. That has been shown in studies to stimulate the growth of brain cells, which is pretty cool. Um, all of them have anti, very interesting antibacterial properties. In fact, I think CBG has been shown to have anti, uh, what's, that, what's that one um, bacterial infection you can get in your skin? Is it called MRSA? Mm -hmm. That you can get, it's like, and it's like, uh, resistant to antibiotics and it's yeah. really, really bad. They're examining it and looking at it because it, it, it seems to have this effect where it stops it, where it kills it. Um, so, I mean, bone building effects in some studies. I think that, that and, and back in the day when I was reading about this, um, I ended up buying, there was a company that was uh, researching CBD and you couldn't even buy um, shares of it on the stock market. You had mm -hmm. to buy what's called um, uh, pink, pink sheets, sheets yeah. mm -hmm. because it was so new and whatever. And I remember I bought $9 a share because I was reading all this stuff and I'm like, oh, this this is going to be huge. And I eventually well, sold for like $150 a share Wow! because the research is just keeps compiling. Oh, that What's was, so interesting to me about the research is that it's, it's complementary to a lot of medicine and a lot of things that uh, people are taking anyways. And so, like you said, like a dimmer sort of effect, like if you know, you're getting too strong of a response. It'll help to kind of bring that down. If you're getting too uh, low of a response, it'll kind of bring, raise that up. And it's it, before that, it was like, what you just had symptoms and you're trying to treat the symptoms with this like concentrated, yep. you know, pharmaceutical, which then you'd have the opposite effect of that if you have the side effects. Right. And so it's like, you know, it's an interesting one that kind of wedges in between both of those. And I know like fungus and mushrooms kind of have an interesting adaptogenic kind of property to them as well. But it is. It's like it's one of those you could just throw it on top of a cocktail of things, and it doesn't seem to have is, like a. Is there a, a lot of effect? Uh, uh, like um, Eastern medicine, like practitioners that utilize cannabis. Do you know? Are you uh, familiar with that? Like yeah. I, no, cannabis would would. Um, there's some history there, but uh, <clears throat> Middle East is where you'll see 
um, certain things like the, you know, what are they called? The Afghani strains. Yeah. You know, they were, they mm -hmm. were um, uh, native to those areas. Well, in India, they had a bunch of gurus who would, um, uh, I think, use it in spiritual practice. You know, what's funny is that because one of the cannabinoids got us high, THC, um, and really you have to heat it up uh, in order for that to happen. That's why you light it. It's called decarbo decarboxylation. So you heat it up and then it becomes active. That's why you cook it or you smoke it. And of course, um, that's what got celebrated the most. Everything else got ignored. And then we ended up breeding the plants that have like, because what happens is all the cannabinoids have to, the, you can't have a hundred percent of each cannabinoid. It's like a balance, right? Mm -hmm. And so we bump up the THC like crazy and it reduces all the other cannabinoids. So the cannabis, like the, the actual marijuana that people use now is, is been bred to just make you high. Yeah. Whereas if you go back a thousand you're years, the benefits. Yeah, yeah. You're, it would have been way more balanced and different. Yeah. And you get more of the potential adverse effects from it, which totally. I think one of the best pieces of advice that you ever shared, um, that I took and have applied. And of course been, there's been times where I've been inconsistent and not, which helps me really un, like measure like, Oh wow. What a difference this makes. And that was simply bumping up uh, the CBD with the THC. Because of that, we've bred these plants to be so high in THC. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it was no naturally found in nature. We've we've bred them to get to that point. And like we always tend to do with stuff like, oh, more is better, right? So let's let's push it, push the limits. And I find if I smoke a really strong THC or eat really strong uh, THC strain, and I and the CBD is low. I I tend to get some of the adverse effects: headaches, uh, insomnia. Right. I have some, a hangover the next day. I don't feel the same way. If I just level that out, or like what I'll do is I'll take the Ned full spectrum. If I take a, a dropper full of that with me, like smoking one of the strains that I have that I know it totally mitigates all that stuff. Yeah, and the other thing I, I want to communicate uh, to people because um, that's one hundred percent true. In fact, there's studies that show the memory loss effects from which are real from THC, right? Like abuse of THC is not good. Let's mm -hmm. just be clear. It's not good for your brain. Um, it's not good for your body. It's got addictive properties like anything that um, can be real enjoyable. Um, you can get withdrawal when you go off of it. Um, so it's got classic potential properties for abuse. Although, I, I mean, I compare it to other substances. It's uh, fairly safe compared to a lot of other uh, commonly used substances like alcohol. But uh, nonetheless, um, if you use CBD with it, studies will show that the memory loss effects um, become way less. You just don't get as much of that, like, oh, I have that short-term, you know, memory loss uh, type of thing. But one thing I do want to say to people is people have been conditioned because the market has been flooded with so much garbage that if they're going to take a product that they're going to be like, well, I don't feel it, but I think it's working. No. If you use a real full spectrum hemp oil or hemp based cannabinoid product, not THC. I'm not talking about marijuana. I'm talking about legal, okay? Legal cannabinoids. So the THC is so low that it's totally legal. You should still feel it. Now you're not going to get high, but if you take it an hour or an hour and a half later, you should feel something. You should feel like, wow, I feel calmer. A calming effect. Yeah. I feel better. I feel a little bit of euphoria. I'm kind of in a good mood. If you take something and you don't feel it, people are like conditioned to be like, oh, it's because it's not psychoactive. Yeah, it's not psychoactive, but you, you should feel something. So if you take something and you don't feel it, either your dose is too low or more likely it's garbage. It's not the real deal. In fact, they've done, and this is just the supplement industry at large, they'll take supplements and they'll study them and find that seven out of 10 of them are totally off, yeah. off what the label mm -hmm. says. Seven out of 10. Yeah. I bet you if you took CBD products, and you took a bunch of them and it's you like tested nine them. out of ten. I bet it yeah. would be most, if not all. Right, hundred percent. Well, at the very minimum, you'd you'd find a bunch of other you know crap in there too. They, I mean, you would you would see them pixie dusting. You would see them. You would see them like just There'd be the, some oil in there or something. Yeah, just the process to get it down to that too. Like there, I mean, you could do a really clean, good job, and then you could do like a real bang up, shitty job to get to that point too. And if it's not being regulated, then why would you waste your time on all yeah. these other processes that make it, you know, more pure and better? It's like only you got to have some serious integrity in order to do that. And I think the price point normally reflects that, right? The the people that are going through these extra steps 
to make sure that it's really, really good and top notch. They're getting it like either tested by a third party. Yep. They're going through multiple processes to get it down to the purest, cleanest source, throwing out anything that's not that. Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're bringing that product to market, but then they're, then they're going to charge, right? What sucks is that when something like this happens, the market becomes incredibly competitive. And then what we end up doing is we keep, we start competing with price. And then you have people that'll be like, oh, mm -hmm. I could get that same thing for $15. Yeah, it's Why, not the same. It's yeah. not the same thing. And yeah. so it's just like, well, yeah, that's because they didn't get it tested. That's because mm -hmm. they didn't go through all the purification process. Like, you know, you're, or they're pixie dusting, or they doesn't even have any of that shit in there that it yeah. says it does. It's so, you know, buyer beware, you know, yeah. I'm, Another thing to consider too is that, and the evidence on this is compiling, they call it the entourage effect with cannabinoids, where if you just use CBD, you get some of these benefits. If you just use another cannabinoid, you get some of the benefits. When you use them together, it's not one plus one equals two. It's like one plus one equals four. You get this <clears throat> multiplication effect. So whatever you use, you do, you want to probably use something that's what's called full spectrum. Um, it's got everything do you, in it. Do you remember that that was one of the biggest things that we, you were all excited about when we first met the guys over at Ned was this, that wasn't popular yet. No. So when, when, as soon as like any sort of information came out about CBD and it was legal, it was legal to sell it and everything like yeah. that, everybody just jumped on the CBD bandwagon like right away. And I know you were always ahead of the curve because you had already been studying it yourself and you're just like, no, it's, it's it better to be full spectrum. Dude. And Ned was one of the first companies out in the entire market that was going that direction with full spectrum. They understood. So this was, how long has it been now? Seven years? Close to that. It's six, been a while. About six years. I so I, I mean, I went, you know, I got to, I mean, I got to paint the context here, like paint the picture, you know, because somebody close to me was dying, I was obsessed with trying to find something that could help her. This was a very tough process. I'm an obsessive person anyway, but I literally for a year, um, all I did was read about things that could help. And then when I stumbled upon <coughs> cannabinoids, I went as deep as I possibly could on it. So I, but I'm not a researcher, not a scientist, but companies would come to us trying to work with them. We want to sell a CBD pro. It was a hot thing on the market. And um, it was very disappointing talking to these people because I knew a lot more than them. I'd ask them a question about like, you know, what kind of terpenes are you? And they'd be like, they wouldn't even know what that was. Yeah. Or what about, you know, uh, CB, you know, CBN or CBG? And they wouldn't even know what that was. So when Ned approached us, I remember I was super skeptical and I'm like, um, at first I said, no, I don't want to work <clears> with any, any cannabinoid companies. They're all, they're all crap. And, you know, Adam's like, well, no, these guys might be different. Or what? I said, all right, let me get on the phone with these two guys and see what's going on. And they knew this was seven years ago when nobody was talking about any of this stuff. Yeah. And we were going back and forth and I'm like, oh, these guys are legit. They mm -hmm. know their stuff. And uh, I mean, look, I got half of my family mm. on um, on Ned, half of them. And these are, these are aunts, uncles, gr you know, grandparents, my parents. Mm. Like they, you know, they well, just want things like, you know, uh, pain. My dad's got arthritis and joint issues from working hard labor his whole life. He takes one or two of the capsules every single night. Yeah, and he's like, "It's uh, nothing's made me feel better consistently than than this." I believe that's what drew uh, was it Rhett, the, one of the owners to uh, CBD and like researching it was somebody that was ill in his family, right? To, yes, his mom or I, I don't remember exactly who, but yeah, it has this whole story behind it, and that was like the driving factor is finding something that actually had the right dosage and was concentrated yeah. with, you know, cannabinoid to help. Yep, so. yep. No, they had a personal story behind it. Yeah, they got a farm they're, i mean they're all like they're these guys yeah. these, these they're legit they're the most yeah. legit uh people that we found in this no, particular space sure. anyway interesting stuff very interesting science for all you nerds out there uh read about the endocannabinoid system because uh it is, there's more medicine and more applications to come yep it's pretty cool stuff all right today's program giveaway is maps aesthetic here's how you can win leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it also subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications if you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale on two workout programs, MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Split, both 50% off. If you're interested in that discount, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Anyway. So I had, to, uh, I had to bring something up because I heard you say, I don't know if we were on air or off air when we were talking about this. But I felt that it's something that I would normally tease you about or make fun of you, and I uh -oh. felt that I should, <laughs> I should ad admit that I <laughs> that I've like been sucked into this too. Is that uh, Katrina and I now have watched most of these Love Love Is Blind episodes? Oh, from, from, from both the seasons. What a shitty, addicting show. So last night, 
you know, so we're speaking of can cannabis, like that's the transition here, right? I'm like, I'm smoking weed and I'm watching, watching Love is Blind with Katrina and I'm going like, why do we like to watch this show? Like, what it's is such it? such a shit show. It, it's such a terrible Bro, show. Bro, it's it, the worst of humans. You know, and the I, I mean, there's something about um, just the psychology of, uh, you know, these, these people that are, you know, getting to know each other before they meet. And it just shows you what, what interesting creatures we are, right? Like 100%, um, there's something to be said about, building and and creating this uh you know non-superficial relationship right you can't see each other it's nothing's phys no physical attraction it's purely about it's like authentic yeah, rapport right their character and their heart and their morals and their values and the things that they're into because i can't see you i'm literally just talking to you so we should probably explain what like the premise so literally they're in these pods and they just they can't see each other and they just talk yeah. And I don't know what the process, how I think it's two weeks. Yeah. It's a few weeks, but it's like power dating, right? So it's yeah. like every day, all day long, yes. they're, they're power dating like, like 20 different people. And if you make a strong connection enough to want to propose, then you propose to someone. And then, right. And the, that, and that happens, that, that happens all the time. Yeah. And then, you know, I think what I think her, Katrina and I love to do is we love to, to predict before oh God, that's what we do before it unfolds yeah. it's like oh no that ain't happening or like, like she's crazy yeah or yeah like, right. oh he's insecure yeah yeah <laughs> right right and now the, <laughs> couple, like a couple of assholes <laughs> the hard Pick critique that, all the hard critique that i have about that show and in in fact for every reality show on television and it's unfortunate because i think reality tv uh started off with some started off kind of cool and then it's just really gone down the hill because it's turned into uh fame chasers right mm -hmm. yes. so like a show is pure on its first season a lot of times like i felt this way about biggest loser i felt this way about real world i feel this way about love is blind where when it first is brand new and nobody even understands how the game is played or what's going to really happen and you're watching it for the first time i think you get the purest version of it and then what ends up happening is a lot of these people just want attention. They go through the whole process to become famous online and TV and stuff like that. They and just want to. They, be on they a show. peer into the formula of what's actually going to get them airtime. Like when you know, yes. if I am to try to make this happen and and get engaged and all that, that's going to be a story now that's more likely to make the cut. Yeah. One hundred percent. Or just signing up in general. Like I'm a failed actor. I want to be on TV. I'm a sign up for the. Sh I'm a sign up for yeah. four reality shows. That's right. There's yeah. in fact there's how a many guy, of them have a know, relationship? You know too like outside the show that they're coming on the yeah. show pretending so, so katrina can't help herself when we watch these things like she goes and like she wants to find out where they're at now right so she'll go google them and look, read all the the gossip online about them or whatever <laughs> and like you know that one of the guys is this is like his second or third like dating marriage reality show okay is it okay now this <laughs> might be a sexist thing to say but like is that like a a, a female thing because courtney like it, as yes. we're watching the show, yes. they have to like look up all the bio and statistics it of is. like the actors and it actresses. Is. I'm like, well, who cares? What it is. is. It, women are more. Um, they're more social. They build communities. They communicate more. They they want to know what's going on. That was that's that the theory behind yeah. that is. They stayed behind and they built the 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 village, you know. Yeah. While the guys were out, it's not just talking. funny. It's exactly what <laughs> yeah. she so, did. So yeah, yeah, Jessica will do the same. Yeah, there was that joke like they should, the the CIA should just hire a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of women. <laughs> They'll find out everything. Get all the about. bios, dude. Yeah. I got all the stats, dude. It's about right here on the board. What's going on? Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's funny to watch. It's it's actually a little depressing though because of how few of them actually work out. They rarely ever work out. I, don't, I think like every season so far, like it's so hard to. First yeah. of all, when we watch it, Jessica and I. So we watched it with my daughter. She's thirteen. And and so I seen before. Oh, I put what does it on, she think about it? Well, before we put it on, I we I said to my daughter, I said, "Honey, I said I just want you to know that when we watch this, this we are we are the worst versions of ourselves as we're watching this. So you can hear <laughs> you're gonna hear me say a lot of stuff. I'm gonna sound like you know whatever I said, but it's pure garbage, and that's you know. Yeah. So we turn it's entertainment. On. Yeah. So she jumps on board and does the same thing. We just you know kind of have a lot of fun, and every once in a while I check myself like God, I'm being mean right now. Or, yeah. Oh, but you know it's 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 such it's so. You have to let yourself fall into it. Otherwise, it's impossible to watch. Because first of all, who signs up for something like this to find a mate? Like, right. What kind of person yeah. does yeah. that? So there's that self-selection bias. So you're going to have like a bunch of narcissists, like weird people. Then on number two, oh, you fell in love over a two-day period and you proposed. Like that's making a mockery out of marriage. Then you meet and then, oh my God, we're still so in love. Then they all meet together and almost every single one of them flirts with another yeah. person's like me and so and the, the cameras are recording that's Jessica, where you're like come on jessica and i are watching we're like don't they know they're being recorded like why would he like everyone's gonna watch this after i'm like it's all fake. so i'll play devil's advocate a little bit with that right so i think that 
there is some like, okay, how often do people in the real world swipe an app, pick somebody, go out to one date, hang out with them and end up sleeping with them or they hang out. They don't get married. Well, yeah, they don't get, but there's that process, the actual marriage process before they actually walk down the aisle, they spend, they spend the 14 days of hours and hours of communicating. <laughs> then they go on a, a one month uh, or no, excuse me, a two week uh, honeymoon type of vacation. Then they go 30 days of living together. And then they have, I think a wedding six yeah. months later. So it's not like literally. Is it six months later? The No, I think the wedding's. No, 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 no. Maybe not six. It's not even 30 days, bro. Remember when they're no, in the house? No, it's... No, remember, there was an episode I just watched. They were in the house living together, and they met the parents. They had just met the parents of the other person. Yeah, yeah. They said, so when you guys get married... First off, the parents even know. So like, what kind of person <laughs> yeah, 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 doesn't of, tell their parents anything? <laughs> yeah. Then then the parents are like, well, when you guys get married? Oh, in two weeks. So it wasn't. It's not that long, dude. I think the whole process... Is maybe a couple months. Max. Well, it's at least a couple months because they're two weeks in the pod, and I know for sure they have a house together for thirty days. Oh. So it's a minimum of two months. You also notice that first off, which there's we've seen you've seen crazier people get proposed to and married. And, and my point of playing devil's advocate is like you got to give them some credit for that that fourteen days of power dating. I mean, hours and hours of uninterrupted one on one conversation. That's that's pure. There's no touching, sexual anything. It's just talking, getting to know, taking notes. Like there's some there's some there's some interesting idea about that. Like, okay, like, you know, if you really disciplined yourself mm -hmm. to just peer into somebody's insides with no distraction of our sexual attraction, how deep and how much could I learn about somebody? Yeah, but I think so. I I, yeah, I think that's interesting, but I think the environment is so fake yeah, I that agree. Yeah, I you agree. are- I think it's I, tainted now. Well, what I mean by fake is it's not uh, the real world. I think if you took a bunch of people, you locked them in a situation, you said, you're not doing anything but this- you're going to find fake connections and you're going to fall in fake love. I really think more of that's going to happen, especially if you had alcohol, they're always drinking. You're all locked up. You're kind of like, I can't do anything else but this. So you're going to like, oh my God, I think I love this person. And, you're going to have and then you're going to amplify these feelings because you're supposed to. Yeah. You're on this show. And then because you're well, that, probably yeah. insecure narcissist because you shine up. I actually up, think- the Then you want the attention. I actually think mm. the experiment- if it wasn't a reality show, wouldn't be as flawed. It's flawed because yeah. it's a show, there's recordings, it's got a time frame, yeah, it's yeah. like people are going to get famous off of it. So that completely taints the test. If these people chose that... that well, they, I think they, you just create a new dating app. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. mean, I, I mean, don't you agree, though, that like the, the, the idea of if everybody like was forced to get to know each other yeah. on a, a deep, intimate, personal level about character, values, morals before the physical intimacy part came in, that there 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 would be probably a lot more successful relationships and mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. Problem is because it's it's put on a, a show and there's cameras and there's people that have been doing these other shows and there's there's social media aspect to it. There's this whole other it completely taints the test. Like yeah. it, it's not a good study. It's not a true like no, because they keep control. referring to it as an experiment. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and it would, it, and and if it wasn't on television, it would be a really interesting experiment uh -huh. to say. What if we did take these people and they weren't on television? No one got any fame out of it, and we actually just controlled a group of a hundred mm -hmm. people and watched this over the course of six months. What would happen? I bet yeah, it would be it's more successful. Pretty funny because there's been spinoffs of this concept. And, yeah, uh, there's lots of. Yeah, there's, there's one about like they would all wear these beast costumes. Oh, I saw this. One. You see that? It's what? so weird. And so they had like they had. Like, like four suitors or whatever, like they would go on these like separate dates with, but they all had to wear like these crazy, crazy costumes. costumes. Yeah, like they, uh, they look like a, a moose or a, a, that's so Bud Light. Yeah, it's <laughs> super <laughs> Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> Be out there, uh, it, so they were they were like uh, deciding whoever had the best personality, yeah. and then they gelled with the best. And then at the end, they have to pick, and, and it's like, oh, this is so tough. I don't know because like you have no idea what they look like. And then well, they take, then they, they take their mask off, and then you, they show you who you got rid of. And, and lots of the times, it's like the hottest one. <laughs> They're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> they kick them. So that's my, my favorite part is the part that I and like, and I love to predict that like by just by looking and listening to these before they all meet of like I, I, like Katrina and I will go like oh no 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 yeah. watch when she sees that dude who she she said no to hey, like she, I'm sorry you, dude but inflections of voice and like I can kind of I can kind of tell what type I don't know I feel like I'd have a pretty decent read uh, on like you know their I think so. physical stature like you know what kind of body they have you don't like, think you can do that 
Like I, what, I, what ethnicity I they are? I, 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 I would know all these. Things. I did a lot of phone calls yeah. in the gym business, and I remember, like, I vividly I'm remember. Good at I talked to him, like, that girl's gonna be cute. Watch when she walks. <laughs> yeah, I, all, yeah. And every time, so every you know, time, so I, you can hear it. I think you can. So hear it. in studies, there is some. Yep. There is some truth to that. So they'll have men listen to voices and women listen to voices, and then rate attractiveness. And there is some accuracy. There's also some accuracy with smell. You know that women mm -hmm. can take a t-shirt that a man wore, smell it, and with a greater than than random, um, uh, greater than random, they can determine the attractiveness of the male based off of the really? smell of the shirt. Yeah. So really? they can smell it and be like, oh, I think this guy's going to be attractive. Yeah. And they're actually right something like 70% of the time. Yeah. Wow. Like that. Yeah. yeah. That's based interesting. Off the pheromones. Yeah. It's a big picture, right? It's a, I, I agree with you. I think it would be a better way to connect with people because let's, if you look at marriage, the idea is you partner with someone and you decide we're going to do life forever together. At some point, like, I hate to break this to everybody, but you're not going to look Feelings the way you do. Feelings are going to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're going to get old. Like, yeah. you're not going to look the way you do. Only thing that's left is that, is all yeah. that stuff. Whatever work you put in. Oh. Yeah, so that, I I agree with that, but I don't know. I, don't I didn't know, know that. That's a, such a, you got me thinking about that. That's a crazy concept that somebody could smell the attractiveness mm -hmm. they can. of somebody. And mm -hmm. did, you know, did you know that they've done studies, right, where when a woman is talking to a man that she's attractive to, she'll subconsciously raise her voice just slightly above yeah. where it normally is. And a man will just slightly lower it down, lower his voice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because of more of a booming lower voice is attractive. Yeah. Right. Ladies? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, voice versus is a big like, one for women. Yeah. Yeah. Girls like, yeah. Like yeah. The, the higher they go, we're like, Oh, I'm paying really? Attention. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, and without realizing it, like you talk to it, you ever watch movies where guys will do that? No, that's Where like funny. a guy talks to her, Oh, Hey, how you doing? Oh, Hey, Hey girl. Yeah. We actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> a so, little bit subconsciously. Yeah. yeah, low voice signifies testosterone and virility. I mean, I could definitely yeah, see uh, guys uh, posturing different, like when you talk to like a girl. Like sure. All of a sudden, you suck it in, you sit up. Yeah, your, your chest, chest up a little is higher, higher, shoulders yeah. are back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, you get like this big, big, bigger posture when, when you're talking to some girl <laughs> yeah. you're attracted to. Did I tell you guys? I think yep. I told you guys a story about the guy that hired, he hired uh, somebody to fake mug him and this girl he was interested in so he could like fight him off and impress the girl. Did I tell you guys about this? Yeah, it was you that did that. I think it's brilliant, except that shit will backfire one day. Yeah. One day some real shit's going to happen. It's gonna yeah. happen. Oh, honey, we better get out of here. Beat him up like that other guy. It's the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's oh, man. Anyway, so uh, AI, lots of talk around AI. We've talked about them mm. quite a bit. And mm -hmm. we've speculated on what industries AI was going to disrupt the most. Yeah. yeah. I have a prediction. Okay. On one industry, I think it's going to completely decimate. Okay. And there's already evidence that it's starting to happen. I have one too. So I just read an article uh, on Reddit. So Reddit is like internet wasteland, right? You can see, read or see whatever um, forums for whoever, right? There's people selling, selling on Reddit, AI generated nudes. So they're not real people. What? They're naked AI, you know, images. Okay. And people are paying for them and loving them. And then the comments are, I don't care if it's a real person or not. I'm not going to meet this person. I just like the new yeah. or whatever. AI generated pornography is going to decimate the porn industry. Uh, uh, it's going to kill it. It's going to crush it. When you can generate, you know, something that's well, valued. It's good for the porn industry because now you're getting rid of like the sex trafficking portion of it that they've been criticized so much about. Dude, when you, when you, when it's indistinguishable from a human and one, and I was thinking about this. I, I don't remember who someone sent it, sent us this article. So I was reading it. When your industry is valued purely for its visual stimulatory effects, like you don't care about anything else. It's mm -hmm. the fact that I look at it and it's stimulatory or whatever, right? Like processed food. It's just like processed food. Then uh, and when AI can make indistinguishable, perfect looking or distorted or whatever your fantasy Will we is, ever you know? be able to though? So, I mean, we what a great transition in this conversation because- we were just talking about how crazy that you could smell somebody and pick yeah. up if they're attractive. Yeah. You could hear their voice and notice the inflection of their voice. There's so many of these like senses that we have as humans that that create this attraction to another human. Will AI ever be able to to generate that fully to fool the human the human's ability mm -hmm. to do that, or will there always be this kind of natural instinct that's so individualized? for all of us that it won't ever quite replace. It could, it could somewhat like yeah. it, like yeah. not on all levels. I mean, it'd take a really long time yeah. for like the physical version of that to be believable. Yes. Yeah. And in person, yeah, it'll take a little yeah. while in on a picture on or a, picture, or a yeah, video. 
That's going to happen already. Doctored. Five years. Yeah. Five years. Uh, you're going to see video and pictures and real actors and actresses are going to be done. Okay. Done. So that, so that's your theory on, I, so I don't think that will get disrupted. Cause it's going to be cheaper. The, the, the actors don't age. They're perfect looking. The scenes can be whatever the hell you want. It could <laughs> fill every fan. Do weird. I mean, whatever, like depraved anything that someone thinks of. I mean, there's going to be, I guarantee there's a, there would be a good person to talk to this with it. Cause it's already in, like if you go to Pornhub, there's already a whole like AI or a whole yeah. like animated section and everything. And they already have like, yeah, but that's animated. This AI stuff looks like what they're selling from this article, it's, I know, but I'm, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm speculating they probably already have some things that are similar and in the direction of what you're you're speculating right now. And I bet you that they could tell just by the increase of viewership and what's happening in there if that's actually a legitimate argument. I'm well, it's a sure. market, and that's what they're saying. They're saying that the market is showing that this is yeah. Okay, I've seen so only fan like like uh, sites where they have they have these like. Uh, Instagram models that are already look just like a real person, but they're fake. They're completely AI generated and they just exaggerate some of their features a bit more. Like it's like over the top, you yeah. know, but it's like still somewhat believable. So people are subscribing to that already, which is kind of a trip. Yeah. Like they're saying, they were saying in this article that people are being catfished mm -hmm. because people are making AI generated images, creating accounts and people think it's a real person, but wow. it's not, it's some dude. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And some, making some money. Nerdy engineer at Bro, code listen, really well. Cheeto dust. Hey, and that's an industry that is so easy to disrupt if you just have something that looks that looks better. So than I what's I, there. So I definitely agree that it'll yeah. be one of the industries that adopt all that stuff first. I mean, we. I mean, we you go back to when we first started mind pump and my uncle, my uncle Casey, right, would always tell us it's like follow the porn industry. Yeah. They're, they're always, they're the always <laughs> <laughs> leading the never, charge on the was, internet. Don't you remember <laughs> that? Yeah, the was, innovators. Yes, that's right. That's don't you remember? Yeah, we all tech died. Follows we all, them every time. Right? I mean, he's yeah. right. though. Yeah. he's right. I mean, they're they're all they're always kind of on the front end of of stuff, especially when it's fringe like this to be the, the the first to adopt it. So I don't disagree that it'll be one of the first to fully adopt, integrate, and use. Will it put all the porn stars out of business and so like that? I don't know if I subscribe to that. What I, I think is an industry that will be decimated first, uh, or at least one of the first, is uh, like trip advisory. So there is like, think about this right now. That's a that's a huge market. Yeah, People that's that, an easy. That's a that's a low hanging fruit. Low hanging yeah. fruit. Like you, and you can already use this in an example. We were having that great conversation with Ben Greenfield that hasn't aired yet. And he talked about how he planned his trip. Like mm -hmm. you can now use AI and go like, okay, I'm going here to here. Yeah. I want the cheapest tickets in economy for whatever you want. I want the cheapest tickets for this. This is what I like. All the specifics. Yeah. Like literally lay out the specifics of your trip that you want. Give me, give me where I go. Where am I going? What am I doing? How much? Yeah. And like detailed out. Like, it has all the data ready to go. Right out. Yeah. And so that, why would I need yeah. a trip advisor ever again? Yeah. Have you seen the charts on the, the the markets that they are predicting are going to be the first ones to get disrupted? Have you no, seen no, I haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, Where's education in that? Uh, in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, legal services. Well, legal would make sense. Was actually at sense. one of the highest. I do remember seeing that. You're yeah. right. Because, that, I mean, how hard, I mean, imagine, imagine how, uh, like, what makes a, an incredible lawyer is the ability all the laws. To, yeah, to yeah. recall all the laws and cases, mm -hmm. which yeah. is like an mm -hmm. infinite amount of that. And so if you can, if you can, how mad would you be you went to school for like years yeah. past the bar yeah. and like you lose, oh, that's a really hard profession. Yeah. To, to besides master, maybe trial yeah. law, like, you know, the, 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 the stuff you typically make money on is like people asking questions and hiring mm -hmm. you for this or for that. And then you just go on AI and it does it for you. Wow. That yeah. would be so disrupting. Brutal to that particular market. Um, what was the other one? It was uh, customer service. That was the number yeah. one that they think is going to be. So I mean, did we, did, we've already seen that. That's already been actually in the works with like the way these like automated, like, I mean, you can go into a lot of websites and like type in a question. You're mm -hmm. talking to a machine. You're not talking to a person on the other end, but mm -hmm. it, it feels like you're talking to a real person. And so that's just getting more sophisticated, right? Yeah. I mean, that, uh, at what point do we replace all the DMV people? Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. So you we named two, <laughs> they never you know, will. You know what? You, yeah, that's right. You've named two things that are government <laughs> yes, involved. Yes, so those will be the last it. ones. Yeah, yeah those right. will be the last That'll ones. That'll just right. stay painful. School, that's where DMV. I wanted. I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like selfishly. Yeah, yeah. No. Let's change that right no, now. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunately that's what won't happen. You know what's going to be really weird? Because we can we can speculate all day on what AI is going to do and stuff. But you know what's going to be really weird? We already are so dis like just generally the public at large 
has lo- has lost trust in authority and media like up to levels that we haven't seen ever i think yeah when you start adding ai generated politicians and speeches and events that you can't tell yeah i think it's it's all the power of video and audio is gone no one's going to believe shit anymore just oh. like when somebody sends an article hey check this article out that says this and you're like oh that's yeah. CNN, fake news, or that's yeah. Fox, fake news. You know, that already well, happened. he had a speech that uh, was a completely coherent sentence. That's fake. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no way that's real. There was a picture of the Pope wearing a white puffy Oh, I jacket, saw that. I saw that. And it spread like crazy. People thought it was real. Yeah, I saw wow. that. But it wasn't real. Yeah, I saw that. So, like, what's going to happen when, like, yeah. think about, like, uh, like there's gov- all those Trump images of him getting, like, arrested. Yeah. He's all tatted up. Yeah, he's all looked, tatted up. Oh, no, that one? Where yeah. He's yeah. All, even, yeah, the ones just, the cops, like, Oh, like, yeah, I, sh- I show you the look super real. Yeah, all the cops, though, look like uh, from the, the Matrix. Guy. Yeah. yeah, they all oh, look yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, yeah, just yeah, a little yeah. bit different versions of the same guy. It's like, oh, like, six fingers on one Yeah, yeah. But at some point, dude, it's going to get weird. We're going to be like, what's, uh, what's so the I, deal? So, okay, yeah. I, what do you think, Mr. Politics, right? Oh, I God. actually think that this election, we're going to see something come out that's really weird. Think yeah. about this. Look, there's, oh, yeah. there's the Pope right there. God, look, how, <laughs> look how good that looks. Tell me that didn't look like a real picture. I thought it was real. That's funny, dude. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's a pimp coat right in there. In five years, do you know how crazy that's going to be? I know, the, look at the detail in the vein in his head and the wrinkles and expression. Like, wow. I mean, that's hard to tell. That's, that's fake. I, that's well, now. Yeah. That's yeah. now. In five that's, years? That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you think this so next election they're going to This next pull out election all the stops. I think For and sure. it, and it, okay, okay think about this too like what, you don't think we already have like AI stuff and like that could literally you could prompt it to go like based off the polls based off of what happened in the last election based off of what the majority of people like this like this like, like literally write me a speech to hit yes. all the perfect things Yes mm-hmm. Yes like that's ha- that has to be Here's, happening already here, I've already thought of this so I'm going to get crazy right let's get let's let's go d- deep with this I don't know if this will happen now but at some point because AI is going to be connected to, um, you know, basically social media, internet large, or it is connected. It'll be able to f- see and determine in real time social media posts, shares, clicks, essentially how people are reacting, responding yes. in real time. Yep, and then so modify. I believe the speech will start and it'll modify as it continues and goes on. This is working. Go in that direction. This isn't working. Back off. Go this way. And literally, you're going to hear speeches that are going to tap into totally most people's psyche and be very, very powerful. I yeah. 100, I 100. Extra convincing. Extra convincing. Yeah. Extra convincing. <laughs> you just need a guy that can finish a sentence. Once you have that, once you have somebody who can actually put a oh full, complete God. sentence together, like that's all he's Well, let do. me ask you guys this. Like, Have you guys ever- Some like media upgrade. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> how many people have actually met and shook the hand of uh, the president? Right, very few. Yeah, right? could they theoretically create the perfect candidate from start exist. to finish? Never exists, and nobody will ever know. And that's the leader of the country, and they're doing this and they're doing that and whatever. Oh, you sound like God. a flat earther. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, Stop. Oh. Who really knows, dude? Yeah, you know? yeah I know. That's, he's been, that's he's trippy. been a president for like a year, and you're like, have you ever met him? Like, yeah, no, I haven't met him uh, either. Uh, yeah. He seems he's, like a great guy. You're just relying though. on all these other people to confirm yeah. it for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look, they tried to assassinate him, but he survived. This guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Wow, he saved that kid. Did you see that? Yeah, oh. I mean, I I think what what we saw with uh, he can fly the social media yeah, platforms in the last basically two elections. I think we're gonna we're gonna see a whole with now with AI integrated into this this mix. I think we're gonna see. I I, I don't even think I can guess what we're gonna see. You know we're what? Gonna, okay. We're gonna see something that oh, yes. we're gonna go. We're gonna look back and go like, oh fuck, yes. yeah, okay. do that. Here's wow. why. Here's why. By the way, for anybody who's thinking like, no, 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 okay. If, if you're saying the, no, 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 you're a fool. That's you're tripping. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, tripping. Tripping. you're tripping. Here's why. They're pressing all buttons. All man. the motivators, all the motivators, everything that is pro that, there's everything in that list is, is huge. Corporations would want that because of their influence over government. Governments are going to want that. Anybody with influence or power is going to want a piece of that. Now think on the other side, zero. There's nothing that would oppose that except for the average person yeah. who is very easy to manipulate to get yeah. them to vote in a particular direction. So, you know, all the incentives- They don't think past what's right in front of their face. Yeah, all the incentives are in that direction. So you better believe you're going to have the full power of money, influence, politics, government, corporations behind creating the perfect- you know, political speech, candidate, slogan, narrative, AI generated, whatever. 
mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. All everything is going in that direction. Yeah. So I. So think, to tell me it's not going to happen, it's just a matter of time. So I I think what, what I don't think will happen to Justin's point of view, you sounding like a flat earther, is saying that we're going to have like this AI generated person. I don't think that'll happen. I think the parties, you know, liberal or conservative, doesn't matter, right, left or right, will find somebody. Let's say like The Rock, who already has fame and is liked by millions and millions of people and then basically groom them mm. which already kind of happens already yeah, it'll right? be an actor right they can already follow us that's, that's right yeah there's already some sort of like ranking system it's already like calculated yes. right now based on people's reactions yes of this person yes oh my God, you, you know what they're gonna do you're yeah, gonna get they're, somebody they're like, aggregating it right now like the sure. rock who has got acting skills is loved by millions of people and then you're gonna groom somebody like that yeah. and that, that that's better than a politician when you think about it because totally. we don't need you to know policy we don't need you to know history we don't need you to know well, reagan was an actor yeah, yes it's already so. like that yeah. though politicians are already just actors that are too yeah exactly on, uh, TV. it's a world I mean, stage dude but but now st- stretch that out further and further and further eventually it won't be people that's what i think eventually it'll be a story that they created from scratch kid grew up in poverty overcame this look at this you know here's all the it's like the perfect like it's like the perfect hero's like, journey here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's what's going to end up happening. You know what I was totally. you know what I was just thinking that could happen right now, literally. Mm, mm. You could literally use AI as it is to say create for me a uh, a, a a video, a 10-minute video of clips of so and so political candidate um saying a bunch of things that sound racist or greedy or whatever and it'll generate for you right there. Yeah. Or can- compile all the tweets that they said that were the most com- controversial tweets. And you're going to get all the information that normally you would need I mean, think a bunch about of political that. advisors to, to research. Yeah. Think about how the process has gone now where you're like guilty till proven innocent. Like for a lot of these charges, they can just like arrest you, throw you in. Now you have to prove that that wasn't you. Like that wasn't me in that video. You know, you don't have certain, like the evidence doesn't hold up. But in the meantime, we could still throw you in the court. Oh. I mean, this is just what it looks like is happening. Jesus. Wow. I'm just, sorry, Jesus. I just crapped it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Screw oh. you, man. Oh, man. What are you, what you pulling, up, what there, you pulling up there, Andrew? Um, you remember the uh, movie Ready Player One? Yeah, yeah I love that All movie. Right, so the main actor in that guy, right? You know the guy, the protagonist I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. So he created this company. Essentially, it, it's in beta mode right now. But you can swap out characters and people for people that recorded video of. What? Whoa. Oh, that sucks. What in the world? So you could record a video with someone and just swap out the face exactly. and the person? And this is beta? You can animate the characters. You can make them real people. Wow. And yeah. you know what complements this? There's is no the, way we're going to distinguish. Is this the same guy who also created the software that does the voice change? I don't know about that. Because it look, the, the UI looks just like that. Have wow. you seen that where Elon yeah. Elon is talking on stage and, and while like he's talking, else? it switches to Morgan Freeman, then Joe Biden, then Trump, then like he's ta- having just like we're having a conversation. And literally while he's organically talking, the guy's got the software from, that's attached to the mic and he's just dragging pictures of the actors. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it, all of a sudden Elon Musk like the sounds actors. just like Morgan Freeman. Wow. No, no stop in his cadence. Nothing is in flat. Like all of a sudden, switches to Morgan Freeman. To, it's wild, How bizarre. dude. I, you add that to this. I still cool. think Justin's theory that you came up with a while ago. I think you're on point, bro. <laughs> the Antichrist. It's, it's the Antichrist, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching from afar, dude. It's, it's gonna, all, it's all unfolding. It's gonna solve everybody's problems. Uh, unite he, the world. Oh, yeah. I don't have an answer for how to combat it, but it's there. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Pull the plug. I'm paying attention. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe know. crazy stuff. Did you uh, did you see Justin that the deepest? This is a long. I guess I don't know if it's connected or whatever, but kind of kind of interesting. Did you know that the deepest hole? I got to pull this up. Maybe Andrew can look it up. The deepest hole sounds like a your mom joke. That's right? <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Damn, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who has? Did it? I just ruin the punchline? <laughs> no, no, it has nothing to do with your mom. All right, okay. The deepest hole ever drilled. Maybe you can look this up. Russia drilled the deepest hole. Sounding ever. more, right? more like yeah, sounding more more like that joke. Damn, bro. Still there. They uh, they just closed it off. They just topped it off and and filled it with with concrete. They stopped drilling. Uh, but they found a lot of interesting stuff and there's all kinds of speculation as to one, there's like one theory, conspiracy theory that they got past, in Russia. I don't know where they did it, Okay, but they got so deep that some people are saying that they heard like crazy creatures and stuff like predator that. And aliens. Uh, and isn't that what happened in predator, and a- predator versus alien? No, they are uh, digging that huge hole. Yeah, but it wasn't like this. So this is kind of like along the hollow earth, uh, people yeah. where they're yeah. thinking, yeah, there's layers. Yeah. Uh, how, how deep is it? Andrew, did you pull it up? 
12.3 kilometers deep. So here's a graphic kind of showing the difference. Yeah, look at that. Dude. Okay. Compared to like Mount Everest, Mariana Trench. So it's still speculated that it's like the the molten lava core, right? Like this is all like in terms of the crust and like what kind of soil and everything is like underneath us. Like it's still like that's as deep as we've ever. That's the drilled, deepest right? we've ever gone. I don't think so, they cracked through the crust. Well, that's the thing yeah. that 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 like that's why it's still kind of like you get conspiracy theorists that will add their own ideas in there because it's like not necessarily confirmed. It's called the Cola Super Deep Borehole. Is there nothing? Is there they no, dubbed it the, the entrance to hell. That was, was wow. Was, is there? Is, there's no concern. Thanks. You guys, as part of us, like just digging a hole until we can't stop anymore. There's no concern. <laughs> well, I'm a, little, I'm a little concerned. It is yeah. a little. I mean, you ever seen how a wiffle ball fly or a wiffle ball flies through the air when you when you throw it? You yeah. save you a big ass hole in the earth like that. I feel like it throw off the trajectory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like throws straight. us out of yeah. orbit. Yeah. Yeah. And right. I go yeah. oh. I do like. We're like wanky no all stupid. of a sudden. No, what's that's that's what you mean? No, bro. There's no air and space. Yes. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, hey, like, you can't be can't be a good hey, idea. That's, hey, you know or that. what? No, I just think the demons will come. Well, out. Yeah, or there's a bunch of like all of a sudden. Yeah, we unleash we some kind of crazy creature. Hey, you know, deep. What's you know what's funny about this is that like adult like men, especially scientists, they're basically just kids that are just <clears throat> smart and that have fi like like yeah. fun. Like we got big shovels, you guys. Yeah, dude. Because when I was a kid, Let's every boy, anybody who's listening right, every boy at one point. <laughs> Try to dig the deepest dig hole to ever. China. Yeah, yeah. like I'm tell like, me that wasn't a thing. Yeah, yeah. We all wanted to dig to China yeah, when we I, were younger. I tried to dig a deep ass hole. You you stop once you get tired. You're like, uh, yeah, I'm done. all right, yeah. I'm I'm over it. But it was uh, it was uh, let's see, forty thousand feet deep into the crust. Wow, wow. dude, yeah. the diameter is no wider so, than a dinner plate. That's because it, they, and so, you said that didn't even go past the the crust, no. then the 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 top layer of the earth. So, so how much then, how much does a project like this cost? Oh, and what did good. we get out of it? Well, so the, like, how many man hours? <laughs> how many fucking shovels? We're just burning no, no, money no, no, in no, that no, hole, dude. He's talking about hold on, shovels. Just, that is just, shovels. just fucking. <laughs> he's got a bunch of dudes. Yeah. <laughs> shovels. <laughs> no, these yeah. are real, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to build a drill bit that deep, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, but why? Like, yeah, like, what do you get? Are you mining resources? Right. Like, you're just digging a hole. They're just trying to see. What's going That's on? That's what I'm saying. How you much get samples? How, give me, give me the. There's got to be a price on this. There's got to be a name of this project. Figure out the the cost of this project. Um, I don't know. I'm I mean, we're over here it. printing money and just yeah. fucking inflation. Bro, yeah, trip it, off this. Do people go in the hole? Do you know like, what the temperatures hey. got to at the bottom of the hole? Oh, interesting. What's that? 356 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, hmm. drastically higher than their models predicted. Hmm. So that's one of the reasons why they had to stop. They had to stop. Okay. That, yeah, they they partially filled it with uh, with concrete, put a steel thing on wow. top of it, um, and they got apparently some invaluable insights into the geology <laughs> of the Earth. Uh, so surprisingly, oh yeah, this was cool. Deep rocks were found to be saturated with water, which was assumed to be impossible because the rocks were sealed beneath a layer of impermeable rock. Wow. They also discovered 14 huh. species of fossilized microorganisms, not to mention deposits of gold, copper, and nickel. And then one urban legend is that the drill broke through a layer of rock and discovered a super hot cavern. Scientists went down and to, you know, to like listen to what was going on with the microphone and they heard uh, hellish howls and tormented screams. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? That's, that's a, it's an urban legend. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. You're going to believe that? We don't think dinosaurs are real. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stop saying that I don't think dinosaurs are real. People are going to yeah. believe in that. Yeah. Who was it? No, because what's... Just because okay. I question them, bro. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. The hollow earth people, they think that it's like not an earth's core. It's like a, it's another sun. Like it's another sun within the the core well, of the earth. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a theory. I mean, that's isn't that kind of a legitimate theory? If they got only that deep and they already got to three hundred fifty degrees, no. What didn't you just say that it was it was yes, really, but the well, way, it's like molten. I mean, but the way gravity works, uh, the the compressed densest, molten lava. Yeah, the densest materials will go to the center. Yeah, is the is the theory, and that's probably you know that's probably it's probably true. what yeah <laughs> most likely. I can't wait to hear what Adam's gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> His head's <laughs> his head's turning. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I think you just carbon dating, it. dude. Actually, do, we, do we really need to go down? Actually, here? to help, yeah. hey, to, to, to hey, do. don't get me on that carbon dating no. bullshit. <laughs> don't even get me started on that. Hey, to to support you, yeah, we got it within a couple million years. Hey, real accurate. Yeah, yeah. shut up. <laughs> to support you though, um, this guy took um, hippopotamus skeleton and said, if archaeologists found this, this is what they think it would look like, and it looks way different than what a hippo. Oh looks yeah. Like. 
Because yeah. the hippo's like this chubby animal. Dude, these are all artistic like renderings. Yes. Yeah. So that's the thing. And that's why all of a sudden they have like feathers now. And it's so, again, it's they don't know exactly. Unless it's like a, a mammoth where you actually yeah. get a frozen specimen. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is what they look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up for interpretation. Yes, so, yeah, I'm going to change, change uh, uh, directions. Yo, I got to shift gears. We have to get over to our our, our uh, uh, butcher box today. And I don't know if I... That's what I was going to ask you about. Oh, so I, I don't... Did you guys see I did? Uh, ribs the other day yeah, right so yeah. I, I got the smoker out before uh easter because i had the brisket i was gonna do so i did some ribs this is the i want to say the fifth time now since we have partnered with butcher box that i i didn't have my butcher box ribs and i had to go like get, go to costco or safeway yeah. and get it and get their ribs and i'd say that like i'd like to think that i'm, I'm pretty good at smoking ribs uh and if, uh, have done it enough times that i've, I've got it down and I mean, the family liked the ribs, right? They're all oh, these are great, this and that. But m me knowing what are the the ribs from Butcher Box taste, it is not even. Are they pork or beef? They're pork. It's the heritage. Oh, pork. oh yeah, I would never compare beef ribs to pork yeah, ribs. Yeah. They were both baby back pork ribs. It's the, it's heritage pork. I swear it, to God, the it, pork chops. I, I don't like pork, but I but the one from Butcher is a distinctive flavor. It's heritage. Yeah. It's called heritage pork. You can read up on it. It tastes. It melts in your amazing. mouth. Amazing. It melts in your mouth. Yes. It's different. It's so. I, I mean, these ribs were good ribs. Everybody was like, "Oh my God, these are so good." And I'm like, "No, they're not." If you have not had the Butcher Box ones, like it is a huge difference. Yeah. I would on my like rib scale, I would give the ones I just did like a seven and a half. And when I do the the butcher box ribs, I'm mean, those things. I can make those things tens. So those mm. come out and it's like fall off the bone, melt in your mouth. It's not even the same. And I just can't. I can't figure out how to get any other ribs to taste close to that. You got. I want to find heritage mm. pork somewhere else just to confirm that if that's what it is. I am mm. not a fan of mm. pork, but when I ate the, the like they make those chops or whatever I don't know what they're called. They're like the cutlets. Yeah. And we bought them, and I'm just, they just they're delicious. It's it's got to be the the type of pork. It's the her, if they yeah, call it heritage. I don't know a lot about it, but I definitely taste. Yeah, different. didn't you look it up? It's how they're fed, right? That's the difference. It's the breed and how they're fed. Oh, it's also the breed that's yes, different. Oh, yes, interesting. Yes, yes, okay, yes. so I so yeah, I'd love to. I would love to track down maybe somebody who's. I'm sure we have a listener who's probably got a line on like some great pork somewhere. I would love to compare what somebody thinks is like some of the best pork they've ever had and and do the ribs and see if I can get them to, because to this day I still cannot mm. cook any other brand of ribs to the level of the butcher box ribs. It's my favorite thing that they have and it's a staple that we keep in all our boxes. All right, so you got one, Justin? Yeah, I got one. Uh, so this guy actually makes these incredible signs, made us a mosaic sign of our logo for us. We're going to put it in the Park City place and kind of display it in our gym. Uh, Ted, what is it? Ted Munn's Mosaic Art is his name. So go check him out, support him. Uh, does fantastic. Did work. you see it, Sal? I haven't seen it. Yet. Oh, it's sick. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's it mosaic has like an LED behind yeah, it. Yeah, it looks dope. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. Check this out. Organifi is a company that makes plant-based supplements that help with wellness, health, athletic performance, fat loss, and muscle building. It's a great company. You got to check them out and get a massive discount by going through our link. Go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and get a massive 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Ariel from Florida. Ariel, how's it going? How can we help you? Good, good. Thank you for having me on. You got it. So uh, for two years, I did a full Ironman and um, I did two Ironmans back to back. So I did one in 2020 and then I did one in 2021. And then during that time, I was working with Dr. Alex Harrison from RP. Um, during the process, though, I lost a lot of body fat, but I wasn't lifting regularly, just here and there when I could fit it in. And so I stopped the endurance sports last year and I went back to lifting because I'm, I just miss being strong and lifting heavy. So I lifted in the gym for about five days a week um, last year, and I finally got my strength gains back. Uh, however, I've been missing a lot of CrossFit. So I've been missing the CrossFit classes, the running, the cycling, the swimming that I used to do. And I'd like to be able to train for a couple of half distance cycles, but I don't want to lose my muscle mass and strength that I've built up this past year again. Um, so I have a nutrition coach and she's really great at what she does, but I think that she, she hasn't worked with any like endurance athletes before. So I wanted to know if it's possible and what, what is the best way to maximize my nutrition regimen and the time that I'm spending lifting in the gym. 
Okay. Well, first off, um, there's there's definitely ways you can mitigate some of what's going to happen, but you're going to. It's inevitable. You are going to lose some muscle um, if you do train for endurance uh, simultaneously with strength training, and especially if you throw okay. in CrossFit classes. Um, so there's going to be a give or take. Now, the ways that you mitigate it, generally speaking, generally speaking, are don't overtrain. It's going to be really easy to overtrain when you mix cardio, uh, uh, CrossFit with endurance training with strength training. Okay. <clears throat> so um, that's going to be really easy to do. So don't overtrain. Make sure you hit your protein targets and get, get good sleep. So that's general. But to be, more, to be more specific, what's the most important out of all those things you just said? Is it CrossFit classes? Is it the half distance cycling race? Or is it going to be to keep the muscle? Let's rank them in order. Okay. So my number one goal working with a nutrition coach is not performance at all. Actually, it's more aesthetic. So I want to lose body fat. Um, but I want to be able to do each of those things at like a mediocre level, if that makes sense. So I'm not trying to be great at any one of those things. I just want to keep them in my life. Um, and I do have these races coming up, which, um, my cycling race is a 45 mile cycle in the mountains. So my goal would be to finish it and finish it at, at a relatively good pace. Okay. okay but you need to rank, you need to rank. She did, what she, I, she so did. aesthetics is number aesthetics one. Aesthetics is number one. Can I tell you a better strategy would be to, yeah. since aesthetics is your number one focus, you should eat and train according to that goal. And then when you reach your aesthetic goal, train for whatever the hell you want. Because then okay. th that will be much easier because if, if I was training you and you told me that, I would say, okay, I know you love CrossFit. I know you love running. I know you're saying we're going to do that stuff. But since your number one priority is you want to get lean, you want to get ripped, you want to get fit, you want to see abs, whatever it is, is let's do that. I'm going to build my your nutrition program and your lifting program based around that goal. Then we're going to hit it. And you're going to high five me and say, Adam, oh my God, I feel the best I've ever looked. This is amazing. Now I want to go after those other things. Now I'm going to feed your body and train you accordingly to those things. And you're going to look great and you're going to go kick ass at those things. But trying to do it all at once is not a good strategy. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be really hard to manage doing all of that and trying to. You're going to be okay. At and, make, all of it. and make aesthetics the number one goal. I mean, uh, if you did all of it together, I would go, uh, you would look at like one day a week of endurance training with two days a week of strength training. Um, and mm -hmm. maybe a CrossFit class thrown in there with good diet. And then you're going to get kind of a little of everything. But if you, if aesthetics is number one, I would focus primarily on that and then wait till you hit that goal. That's a hard enough goal by itself. Like, yeah. you know, adding other stuff to it is like, oh my gosh, now we're really making things almost impossible. So, I mean, I agree with Adam. I think if that's the number one goal, there's nothing wrong with just focusing on that and doing that. Yeah. And then when you get to your aesthetic goal, then you can play a little bit with the different types of training, engage how much of each you can do based off of what type of aesthetics, you know, you, you have and, and what you're losing from that type of training. And, and by the way, on our way, if I was training you towards this, you know, aesthetic goal, it doesn't mean that I can't include a little bit of running, cycling and swimming in there. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to, I'm not training you for endurance on those sports. It's like, Hey, you want to, so you know what, this maintaining the skill yeah, of it. Really. Yeah. It'd be like, Hey, you know what I want you to do this week? This week, I want you to go for a nice swim, you know, 45 minutes to an hour swim, do, do a swim. Uh, oh, next week I'm going to have you do a, like, I would include these things that you love to do because as mm -hmm. a client, I want to make you happy and enjoy that in you, since you've already expressed that, but your, your bulk of your nutrition and training is going to be focused on getting you the look that you want to obtain. And by training for endurance, for swimming and cycling and running, it is, is going to conflict <clears> with <throat> my training around aesthetics. So, but it doesn't mean that I can't include some of that stuff. So you can have some fulfillment because you like, it sounds like you like doing those things and I, and I could find a way to include it, but to be good at it, because it's, a, there, you're, you're, you're wanting to do it as a sport, right? And there's a difference between swimming like leisurely or cycling leisurely or, yeah. you know, for cardio reasons for a little bit versus trying to be good at that thing. That's, there's a, they're totally different. Yeah, it'd be super challenging. I mean, I, I'm with you on that in terms of like um, those activities, being able to include that. If you were focused on aesthetics and you're working out with those workouts and then in between you had like maybe some of those other uh, things that you're into, like swimming, uh, even some of the CrossFit 
work like some of the exercises in there that you know require a little bit more skill and practice if you could do that at a low you know to moderate intensity and just work on the skill of it that's gonna be very mentally challenging though uh with somebody that i know is like you know they get into those events and those things for for that like output that that high intensity output of it and the competitiveness of it but if you were able to do that and be disciplined with it like it it actually would benefit you look ariel to be to give you something specific because we're giving you some pretty good general advice but to give you something specific if do you have do you have any of our workout programs no no i didn't want to add one more thing to my plate but i think you wouldn't be adding anything you'd be replacing so here's what i'm going to do okay if you want to follow a program that's going to give you a little bit of all of this then i'm going to send you maps cardio and you can follow it as it's laid out and in there there's a day set aside for you to be able to include your uh, long distance cycling now if you follow maps cardio you're not going to add anything else to it because that'll screw it up. Don't add CrossFit on top of it and a bunch of other stuff on top of it. Follow it as it's laid out. And on, in the program, we have designated days that you can implement your favorite form of cardiovascular activity. Those are the days you do your long distance cycling. Do that and you'll have the best shot of getting a little bit of everything that you're looking for along with working with your uh, nutrition uh, nutrition guidance. Okay. Okay. Um, since I do have this race, I've already signed up for it. Would you say just put put the aesthetics on the back burner for now yeah. and just focus on doing the race? Depends and then if you're go committed back. to the race. Yeah. When is when is the that. race again? When is it? Um, it's in it's at the end of July. Yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, it, is it something you really want to do, or can you skip it? Yeah, I really want to do it. Yeah, then <laughs> then then you know what? Then fo- Maps Cardio will let you train for that. Follow Maps Cardio. Okay. In there is is a day that you can throw your long distance running, and you'll get some good strength training that complements that type of performance that you're looking for. So follow Maps Cardio leading up to it. Okay. Okay. That way you have something specific because what I'm afraid is going to happen is you're going to leave, you're going to take all of our advice, and then you're going to try yeah. and mishmash your own stuff together, and um, then it's going to be detrimental. It's a lot so, of competing signals. You're yeah. So get very far Maps Cardio, literally, we wrote for people whose like main goal is athletic. For cardiovascular we type wrote it of for performance. People, we wrote it for people like you, people yeah. like you who love endurance cardio training, but then but also they don't want lab, to lose muscle. But they, yeah, they have aesthetic goals too. Yeah. So just follow yeah. that program leading up to, in fact, you got, it sounds like about the right amount of time, right? We're in April. Follow that program. That should get you prepared for a decent performance uh, for your event without sacrificing too mm-hmm. much of aesthetics. If anything, you may gain some aesthetics. I can get behind that. Okay. All Thank right. you. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Thanks for calling in. Thanks. Bye bye. No problem. You know what that, so, okay, so I got to remember when we hear questions like that, it can be frustrating because people just, they don't understand that you training for one thing and then training for another thing. It's not like you can stack them. Yeah. Oftentimes training for one thing means you're sacrificing something else. Like mm-hmm. if I train you're for max- away from another thing. Yeah. If I train for max strength, I'm not going to have max stamina. If I train for max stamina, I'm not going to have- max strength. If I train for max mobility, I'm not going to, so there's always a give and take. And this is why you, if you know, if you look at the perfect type of program for someone lifelong, Mm -hmm. they cycle through different things, but it's, but to us, it's like somebody, imagine if someone, you know, went to the average person and say, Hey, look, check this out. Look, I'm getting married next week. I'm devoted to my wife, but I love going to strip clubs with my buddies and going out with other chicks. How can I do both? You're like, uh, you I can't. Still, you do I one st- or the other. Yeah, I still really love that visual of these uh, avatars for like um, for video games where yes. you're, it's like you're pouring in your your energy, your power, and then you have to disperse it amongst all those skills. That's and right. It's like you don't get to you know just stack all these like skills that are completely different. You know, you're going to be more powerful in one than the other, yeah. and so you just have to look at it as like what you're going to be sacrificing versus what you're going to be, you know, completely. You know what, on. you know what the problem is too with this is that there are those crazy anomalies in, in the performance yes. world. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that Bo are, Jackson's like they're the something. top yeah. of the top in their mm-hmm. sport, which we think for some reason that, you know, we're, we're nothing like these people because they're such anomalies and they are crazy at everything and they are ripped and they are muscular. And you think, well, I can definitely do that. Yeah. I want that. That is the, that is literally the 0.0001% of people in the world. And it's not because of their training. It's because of their genetics. Mm-hmm. The training plays a role, but it's their genetics. So, for for everybody else listening, the ninety nine point nine 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 percent, if you have you have competing goals, you know, oftentimes it's better to train for one and then another and then another versus all at the same time. 
you often overtrain or you get none of what you're looking for. Well, I think when you when you start to throw in aesthetics in that mix, it becomes incredibly difficult. Aesthetics by itself is it's hard. the hardest of all of them. Yeah. Okay. Now, maybe the other ones are more physically demanding, but as far as understanding caloric balance and stress and yeah. frequency, intensity, volume, there's and so eating many. Is such a higher priority. In yeah. Aesthetics. Under, understanding how to to balance all that out to get the to manipulate the body to give you this look that you want is unbelievably difficult. So my suggestion for someone like this, and here's, by the way, too, there's some asshole coach that's listening to this that will probably talk to her and be like, I can do that for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then, just let me, it all to yeah, you. let me show yeah. you, right? So yeah. it's like- $300 it's, a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't mean it's not possible to get some of that stuff, but a much better approach to this would be, listen, you, you already told me that your number one goal is you want to achieve this look. So let's let's learn everything you need to learn about caloric balance and 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 protein and macro stuff and strength training and, and let's sculpt the body you want because that's- fucking hard as shit as itself by itself now that i've got you to understand that and you're where you want to be now we can just feed the body correctly giving it enough nutrients and calories to support this endurance training we're doing and if and it's an inevitable you're going to lose a little bit of muscle but because you sculpted and built the body you you want before you go into that sport training you're going to look the best you could have while training while doing that. that yeah while right. doing that good point yeah so i just think that is the the order of operation for somebody that says that that they want this look and i feel like that's your point about how we have these anomalies like everybody has seen that runner or that swimmer they're like god i wish i had yeah, that look like a bodybuilder too yeah they had this great physique it's like oh man that's so that's so not attainable for the average person that person just is a genetic freak they look amazing and then they happen to be great at that sport that's too right. her next caller is andy from pennsylvania what's up man how can we help you Hey guys, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for uh, taking this time here to uh, to answer my questions here. Uh, I've actually spoken with Adam a couple times through the NCI coaching. So uh, your I business I advice, you. but uh, yeah, uh, your business advice has been great. I've been focusing a lot on teaching more so than just trying to bring in clients. So it's been going well. So thank you. Right on, man. All right. So I'm going to uh, just, I'll just read my question here. Um, so thank you so much. I'm a coach uh, and a trainer and you guys have made me so much better. Um, not just from like the programs that you create, but from all the, um, the perspectives that you take in terms of like trying to understand, you know, what clients are going through as well. And I, and I really have learned a lot from that. Uh, and I need your guidance because I'm one of those trainers who, uh, I can take care of everybody but myself. Um, so I'm struggling to lose weight right now. I want to lean out. Uh, I just can't seem to do it. I feel like something's missing. So here's a little summary. I work out uh, and train five days a week. I'll usually do one day where I'll do like a, like a metabolic conditioning type of workout. Then I'll do a day where I focus on a big lift, a bench press day, a deadlift day, a squat day, an overhead press day. At the end of those workouts, I'll do like a little mini circuit where I kind of focus on more, just get the heart rate up, kind of get a sweat going. Um, always a full body type of circuit. Uh, currently, um, I'm at 238 pounds. My goal is to get down to 190. I focus on protein and water. I take creatine, vitamin D3 and B12, probiotic. I am working with a dietitian and I am doing intermittent fasting. Um, so I'm not sure if my training is wrong, if my diet is not matching my workouts or my workouts aren't matching my diet. Uh, am I overstressed? Uh, bottom line is I'm lost and frustrated and I need someone to ask me the questions that I'm not asking myself. So I appreciate your help. Okay. Right. Okay. I have an idea, but let me, before I get there, how many calories are you, what's your maintenance? Are you tracking how many calories you're consuming? What's your maintenance at? I am tracking my maintenance right now is about 2,500, a little more, a little less, depending on the day. Okay. And how much, how, what are you eating every day? Uh, what do you mean by eating? How many calories? Like how many calories? How many calories? Yeah. Are you in a Sorry, deficit? Yeah. Yep. Oh, am I, I am, no, I'm, I'm at maintenance right now. I'm sticking at maintenance. Okay. So I don't think the pro, the problem is any, any of the stuff that you listed. I think you might be overthinking this. Um, it's the, it's, this is all diet. I don't think it's your workout. I think your workout could be better, 
but I don't think that's what's going to make this this needle move that much. Yeah, it's now not, it's not horrible. Yeah, right. I would. I mean, I, you know, Maps Anabolic would be a good program for you. Um, I would try to get your metabolism to speed up a little bit before cutting. But this okay. sounds to me a lot like your struggle really has more to do with your relationship to food than anything else. I think this is a diet issue. And just from what you're saying to me, how you're frustrated, you just can't get it to seem to work for you. You do better with your clients than you do for yourself. These are all uh, the things that I hear from people who um, they have the struggle that they challenge, that they're challenged with themselves. And it's really the relationship to food. So I would guess you probably do really well most of the time. And then when you go off, you go way off with diet. And that's kind of what screws you up. Am I hitting the nail on the head? You absolutely are. Yeah. So this is a behavioral thing, um, Andy. This is not a, because you're a trainer and you're working with other people, your tendency is you're trying to reflect that on yourself and get into the details of what's going on. Am I overstressed? Is this what's, a, but this is actually a, a pretty simple thing. You're, you're, you're just consuming too much more than you're burning. Obviously. Now let's dig a little deeper. We got to look at the behavioral reasons as to why this is happening. Are you coming from a place of self-hate? Are you using food as a way to distract or self-medicate? What type of relationship do you have with that food? What does it feel like when the impulse comes to overeat? What's happening with you um, when that starts to happen? And this is going to be a slow unwinding process. Now, um, if we're talking about like steps to take, this is not going to be huge steps. These are going to be very, very small steps um, that you're going to take one at, at a time. So it may look like this. You may be like, okay, um, I noticed that when I go off, like when I go real off, these are the feelings that I have when that happens. It tends to happen when I'm overstressed or tired or whatever, okay? Now what I'm going to do when those feelings arise, first off, I'm going to try and identify them. And when I do, I want you to uh, find a way to create a barrier between you and the impulse of eating. So fill in the blank. It could be, I'm going to uh, write for 30 minutes about what I'm feeling. After that, then I'll eat whatever I want. Or I'm going to go for a an, a, a, uh, an hour walk and just really think about how I feel. And then after that, I'll eat whatever I want or whatever. All you're, you're not saying you're not going to engage in the behavior that you normally engage in, in but you're going to create a barrier between you and that impulse. This is going to be very uncomfortable, but it's the it's going to allow you to interrupt that impulse that's causing you to go off when you go off and then afterwards feel the shame and then afterwards become super strict because the shame motivates you and then get sick of the shame and then the shame becomes overwhelming and then now I'm going to you know, feed myself and, and numb these feelings type of deal, which is a very common cycle, but you have to interrupt that process with some kind of barrier between you and that behavior. Um, I do recommend you working with somebody who will work specifically with this with you. So one thing you can do, Andy, I don't know if your dietitian will do this for you or if they're just about giving you foods and calories to follow. If they're that kind of dietitian where they're just like, here's what you're going to eat. Um, you, you're working with NCI, right? I am. Yeah. Okay. NCI, in my opinion, has some of the best coaches and trainers in this regard, I would reach out to some of your peers in the space and say, Hey, and be very vulnerable. Hey, here's a deal. I have this trouble and challenge. Can I hire you? Can I work with you to work with me on this specifically? Because I don't think, and I'm, I'm giving you advice right now, but it's going to be really hard to do without that person that you can reach out to and, and work with on a consistent, because you're going to stumble. Okay. I'm going to tell you, that. you're going to stumble if you, if you attempt to do this, but having that coach is going to make all the difference in the world. Now, the beauty of this is on the other end of this, Andy, is a coach, you, I'm talking about you, that is going to be exceptional, exceptional at working with people uh, like yourself, which is almost everybody, which is most people. So at the on the other end of this, when you make it through this and you really start to figure this out for yourself in that process, number one, it's going to create get great content because you're going to be able to put it out there, communicate vulnerably and honestly. You're going to be able to coach people better, and you're going to be super effective at what you do. Uh, but I do recommend you work with somebody uh, through this through this period. I, ha I have two questions. Um, one, uh, do you know how many steps you're taking a day? 
Uh, yes. So I'm around. I'm not, I'm not taking a lot of steps. That's definitely one of those things that I have taken into consideration. Uh, it's between five and 7,000 a day. Okay. That's not horrible though, either, bro. It's not too bad. I've seen a lot worse than that. The average shit, the average American's like 3,500. So yeah, I take less than that right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not, that's <laughs> not horrible. I just, because I was kind of figuring out like how far off you are from like a, a healthier maintenance level, like for your size, I'd like you to be closer to 3,000, 3,200 or something like that as a maintenance than, than 2,500. Um, okay. But if you're not moving hardly at all, that's not necessarily too far off. So you're not in that bad of a position is metabolically. I think uh, with a focus on like Sal said with anabolic and adding uh, adding to build some muscle, I think you you can see a, an increase in your metabolism. The second question I had is uh, why intermittent fasting? So so that was when I started working with the dietitian. Um, so I last year when I got a physical done. Um, I had higher cholesterol and my doctor recommended through his practice working with the dietitian and I connected with her and I think she's great as far as what the things that sell that you were saying. I don't know if she does that stuff or not. I've never actually spoken to those things, um, to her about that. It's been more along the lines of like eating practices, intermittent fasting, lowering the calories, eating better, making better food choices, things like that. Uh, not necessarily the behavioral stuff. And yeah, I don't, I don't think I like, I don't like her putting you on it. I'm really curious to why she would do that. I'm not a fan of you intermittent fasting. If you already admitted to Sal that you do really well nutritionally, and then you kind of have these off the wagon moments where yeah, intermittent you can, fasting is wrong and intermittent yeah. fasting, I think just, it promotes that. It's going to perpetuate that behavior. Yeah. Well, strengthen it within. I, I will totally agree with you on that. And, and, and I'm not an emotional guy, but this is like throwing me off. Cause you just, you hit it so hard that it's just like shaking me a little bit. And that's exactly what I'm doing is I put so many restrictions on myself yeah. and then I'll slip. And then when I do, I just like, I, I beat the shit out of myself. Yeah. yeah. And I come from a, I'm a recovering alcoholic. So those behaviors are there. They're ingrained in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now I can fight the addiction type of stuff, but I still have the stuff with the food addiction and the other and things there. So it's like, and here's, here's the reason why I was able to, uh, hit those buttons with you after talking to you for 30 seconds. It's very common. Mm -hmm. It's very common. Yeah. I've worked with a lot of people who've struggled with this and I've had a lot of success, but it's going to be a challenge. If you've already beat alcohol, you're going to be able to do this too. Okay. And the things that helped you beat alcohol are going to be similar to the things that are going to help you with your relationship to food. Now I got to ask you this before I tell you to not work with this dietitian anymore. Are okay. you, are you, it was this like a, are you on medication? Was this like doctors like you got to work with this person or was this more like advice? It was more advice. Yeah, no, I'm not on any medication okay. or anything. And, and I want you to reach out to your group in NCI okay. and find a coach there that can work with this stuff with you because uh, just through the, you, you know, this, you go through the program, you know, mm -hmm. that they, that there's some good people that are excellent at this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. and then the other thing is if you have the, the extra, if you have the extra funds and time, um, a, another person you could hire that would be profoundly helpful would be a therapist. Uh, just uh, I am working with a therapist on my, cause I also have some depression and anxiety stuff. Okay. So I'm working on that. I have a therapist there. Oh, wonderful. I would, I want you to include them in this process if you haven't already. And I, you know, maybe bring to them and say, Hey, look, um, I've identified that I'm abusing food, you know, in the ways that, you know, in similar ways to how I used to abuse other substances. I have this relationship with food that's complex and I want to work on that. Um, and then work with your therapist through that. If you work with a therapist and an NCI coach, you're going to have really, really good chances of success. success. And here's what I'm going to help you. I'm going to help give you the motivation you're going to need. Okay. I'm assuming you became a trainer because you have a passion for fitness and you have a passion for helping people. Correct. Okay. Here's what I want you to do right now. Cause I'm going to tell you to love yourself, but that's going to go in one ear the, out the other. So I <laughs> want you to do this so that you can be the best coach and trainer for your clients. Okay. Now here's the kicker. The only way to do that is to start caring for yourself the same way you care for them. Okay. Use that as your motivation. I think you'll do okay. And okay. Andy, can I, can I put you in our private form? If you're not in there, I want to follow up with you and see how you're doing through this process. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not in the form. That would be, that'd be great. All right. Are we going to see you at the event, by the way, uh, in uh, Phoenix? Are you going? 
Uh, I am not going. Um, not this year, uh, but hopefully next year. Okay. Next event, I want I want you to come give us a give us a handshake or a hug. I want to meet you. <laughs> All right, I absolutely will. All right. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. We'll put you in the forum. Okay. Do you have Maps Anabolic? I I I, I asked you that too, or or to give that. I one. I do have I do have Anabolic. I've ran that a few times. Okay. Uh, okay. I want follow that program through this process. I think that'll be the best one for for boosting the metabolism through this process. Yeah, no, I okay. want I, I want to hear more about the dietitian that you end up landing on because I don't I don't want you on intermittent fasting. I don't no, like no, I think the NCI coach mm. will be way better. Yeah, keep us okay. keep us posted, Annie. All right, I'll do that absolutely. All right, man, you got it. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, man. I you appreciate know. you know people like that, right? Yeah, no, I knew I recognized him right away, and I'm like, I know I've, I've talked to this guy a, a yeah. lot, and uh, it's the NCI group. You know, um, it's crazy, right? Dietitian, right? So many times, uh, you know, we're not dietitians, right? So, it's the medical system. Right? It's, yeah. it's the, they work within the system, and they're not taught. They're, it's starting to change, but they're not taught to really work with the root behavioral issue. They're more like, oh, do this attempt. Don't eat this. Eat that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not the issue. It's so crazy to me, though. Like, it seems... I guess maybe it, it seems so obvious if somebody has a history of abusing a substance, they're right. struggling with that nutritionally. The idea of you constricting their restricting it more, yeah, restricting their eating window. To, the, the idea that they're, they're that you're not going to like this is an example of where I love like six meals a day. Is he never allows himself to get really much really, better approach? Yeah, and they're just balanced, good meals. He never gets really, really hungry, and like, and and then it's easier to stay on the wagon. It doesn't feel like right. on or off. Yeah, much, versus much. like, hey, restrict for fourteen hours, don't eat, and then when you do, make a really yeah, good it balance. Puts so choice. much intensity around those meals. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, that's what we yeah. don't need. I can almost guarantee you uh, that the dietitian doesn't even know those things because they don't know to ask. That's crazy yeah, to me, yeah. dude. I, okay, think of yourself. I, I, if I ever uh, am tempted to make a poor food choice at night, it is always. The days where I missed a meal or two in yeah, between, course. and I was of working course. real hard, and now I'm hungry and I'm tired, and I'm Those like impulse levels go way, way up. up, and yeah. I'm like, that's. But if I'm like on my shit every two to three hours, I'm getting a nice little small balanced meal, and I never reach that point of like, oh, I need to eat the yeah. cravings and that feeling. Yeah. So and then you put a pres a person that's already. Struggling. But you know, come to, on. I'll tell you though. I mean, uh, it took us years of working with people and failing to figure out, you know, what we're communicating True. now. Cause you gave this guy to me in the first, I don't know, seven years, eight years. I was a trainer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, you got to do this. got to do that. You're, you're just it. thinking calories. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, uh, it took me Reduction. a long time of failing clients, a yeah. long time before I started to piece some of the stuff together. Um, and it's, look, it's going to be hard. You know, Andy, if you're watching this, it's going to be tough, but, um, you know, if you, if you go on this journey one step at a time, and try to address the root, which is more painful and more challenging than just watching your calories. Okay, yeah. but if you if you focus on that, you'll get there. You'll get you'll be on the other end of this. Next caller is Maggie from Colorado. Maggie, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi guys, this is so cool. Thank you guys so much for having me. You got it. Um, so my qu my question is, um, I'm a high school athlete, uh, track and field. I'm a sprinter, and I've also and I also just weight train for fun. Um, and I drink upwards of four gallons of water a day and I'm a relatively small person, five, four, one twenty. Wow. Um, gallons, and I'm yeah. still, yeah, I still have every symptom of dehydration. Um, my urine's dark. I am so thirsty all the time. I crave salt. I, um, I am like so thirsty and feel like depleted during my workouts and I drink the LMNT. I, I feel like I'm doing everything and I'm still just so dehydrated and I don't quite know what I'm doing. Okay. So, Maggie, real quick. Yeah. You're, 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 you're sure about the three to four gallons of water? Yeah, I, I okay. have one of these and I, yeah, I'm sure it's about okay. three to four gallons. Yeah. Holy okay. Shit. When's the last time I'm not going to, I don't want to scare you. Okay. But yeah, when's the last time you went to your doctor yeah, and had see your doctor. and got a full checkup, got your urine and your blood looked at? Every t I went like two months ago and they said everything was good. And they just said that I needed to just keep staying hydrated. But it's like, it's like a nauseating amount of water. Okay. Yeah, I would yeah, go yeah, back. Yeah. Three to four gallons is no, insane. I would yeah, go yeah, back. I would, I would, yeah. I would, I would go back, say it again. I'm tracking my water. Here's a problem. The problem is you're a young mm -hmm. girl. You're an athlete. You look fit. So they probably think you don't know what you're talking about. So they're probably, yeah, she thinks she's drinking enough yeah, water, yeah, yeah. but she's not. No, no, no. I want you to go to your doctor and, and you're going to use these words. Okay. I was here two months ago. 
I'm back. I am tracking my water. I am drinking exactly three to four gallons of water a day. Here are my symptoms, and my urine is dark. And I'm taking the element to and, tell- and don't and say. And I know I'm getting enough sodium. I need you to t- to send me to the right people to to do some tests because this could be a wide range of potential things. Yeah. That I'd want you to check before okay. I give you any advice whatsoever. Yeah. Because I'm not going to tell you to drink more. Okay. If you're drinking that much, and yeah. No, yeah. It, so what are your symptoms? Yeah. Muscle cramps, fatigue, dry yeah. sick. What so, are they? Yeah, I just get I get really fatigued during my weight training and my and my sprinting. Obviously, that's when I usually drink the LMNT is when I need when I know I'm going to be sweating a whole bunch. Um, I just feel thirsty all the time. Um, I like I said, my urine's dark. Um. I crave salt. I eat really clean, so I know I don't get a lot of salt in my diet besides salting my food. And I just like crave an insane amount of salt. Mm-hmm. Um, I can, yeah, and muscle cramps, here, um, here's especially two, in my legs. Here's yeah. two places I'll, I'll point to. Um, I want you know, I, I just you know, yeah. keep these in mind or write these down. D- definitely tell your doctor mm-hmm. your symptoms. Tell them be very clear and confident. I'm tracking my water because otherwise they're gonna di- they're gonna dismiss you. And get your thyroid. Okay. I would have them look at your thyroid. And I'd have them check your blood okay. sugar. Okay. Those are two places okay. I'll point to, but I'm not a doctor and it could be many potentially other things. Mm-hmm. It could also be nothing. But if you were my, you know, if okay. you were my client or my daughter, I would hundred percent be like, we're going to the doctor yeah. and we're going to run a bunch of tests, tests. Yes. Yeah. yeah, to figure out what's going on. Cause I don't think this okay. is a, uh, you're not getting enough water and enough salt thing. Of course it's not. No, no way. Is, yeah. Yeah. This is too alarming yeah. for that. And then yeah. and, and then uh please email back in and follow up with this cuz I want to know. I want to know this uh, I I've never Okay. had a client yeah. that could drink 3 to 4 gallons in the first place, especially a 120 pound client. Yeah. That is yeah. insane. When I was at the highest level, 240 yeah. pound trying to drink and push as much water, I could get to 3 gallons. That was like insane yeah. to do that. Do you notice um yeah, any any muscle? Yeah. No, it's like do you, do you notice any muscle weakness, uh, any random fatigue that kicks in, um, anything weird? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I, I tend to, um, like, because I have caffeine before my workouts, um, I tend to get through them, but I, I always notice by the end, I'm like, I feel like I've been walking in the desert for three days. Um, I also just get randomly fatigued. Like my friends think I have some kind of narcolepsy cause I will just fall asleep. Like I, like my fatigue is very hard to regulate okay. if that's yeah. any indication yeah. of anything. If you could go and get checked out like today, I would do that. Yeah. And yeah, uh, and then I okay. want I want I want, to, I want to follow up. Yeah, I don't wait. I go today if you can and okay. have them look and, and and if they're, you know, okay. if he's like, "Well, where do you, you know, he or she's like, "Where do I, you know, say I want to be checked. I want my my blood sugar to be checked and I want my thyroid to look at be looked at." But also List the symptoms. Tell them what you're drinking, and list all the weird stuff that you think that might not be connected. You also need to let them know about the element because that's a lot of sodium. They might think she's low sodium because she eats healthy no. and she's running so much. Make sure you should, they know your. They'll check plug. her urine. If your urine's dark yeah, those- too, and you're drinking all that, that I, make sure you go. Yeah, I would go. I would go like today if you can. She froze. That's okay. You can text. She her got her. the message. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you send her that, bro. I have, I have never had a 120 pound female client that could drink three to four. I don't want to scare. Mm. Look, we're not, look, I'm not a doctor either. Okay. But the thirst thing, the thyroid was definitely, I would look at thyroid. I would look at potential thyroid issues or potential diabetes. Cause one of the signs of where your body starts to really become insulin, uh, desensitized is you just get like unquenchable thirst. The random fatigue could be something autoimmune, uh, that hasn't been diagnosed. Is there, I didn't ask about her blood pressure either. I would, I mean, dark urine with that much water. I would look at kidneys. I would look at liver. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's not something that is within the scope of, you know, that's way above way out of our pay grade. For sure. Yeah, that, I know enough to know. I've that. never seen that. Yeah, no. I've, that that I mean, I hope she emails back and gives us feedback because yep. I would love to hear uh, what they what they. No, I just remind. Well, in in mine was a blood pressure issue, but it was like it was just so crazy, like the discrepancy of like you know potassium and how that drops so quickly with me, and yeah. so it's like you know there could be something there. Like I had like a tumor yeah. that that was un, For you, undiscovered. Right? So you know, there's just things you need to test. Uh, when there's an abnormality like yeah, this. there's something going on, yeah. and so they they need to. She needs. This is where medical doctors really have tremendous value. So. Yep. Our next caller is Giacomo from Arkansas. Giacomo, how's it going, man? How can we help you? 
Good. How you guys doing? Good, good. good. Yeah, I recognize my people from good. a mile away, especially with a name like that. <laughs> hey, my, my fellow, I was going to say my fellow Paisano. How you doing, my man? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. How All we, right. What's going on? How can awesome. We uh, well, before I get into my question real quick, I uh, just want to do the obligatory um, uh, thank you to all that you guys do. I've been following you guys. I uh, started listening to you guys in college in uh, May of 2019. And uh, you guys have helped me so much, not only with my own fitness journey, but with my client's fitness journey. I've been a personal trainer on and off since about uh, 2020 when I graduated college. Um, and yeah, you guys have, like, you guys have mentioned it before on the show, like effective communication, like if, communicating effectively uh, messages to your clients. Like you guys have truly have helped me with that, not only with my clients, but also with um, my friends and family. So I really do appreciate all you guys do. Thank, Thank you, you, man. Right on. Absolutely. So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, so I'm preparing for a professional football combine on May 27th. This combine will have scouts from not only the NFL, but the Canadian football league, the USFL and the XFL. I have to perform a series of drills, testing my agility and quickness at the linebacker position. I currently weigh 220 pounds sitting at about 13 to 14% body fat. My goal is to add five pounds of muscle while also decreasing body fat to be at a solid 225. I uh, want to look good, of course, but uh, my main thing is performance. Uh, it has to be on point for this. I'm starting to track, been tracking my food for about two weeks now. Uh, my goal is 225 grams of protein and 3,500 calories in a day. I've been consistently hitting my protein, sometimes a little bit more, but not my calories. I get anywhere from about 3,000 to 3,300 a day usually. I'm about to start working with a track coach about two days a week this week, and I've been lifting consistently uh, three days a week. It's going to be four days this week. i um, been following this program the last two weeks. Uh, that one of my friends sent me, who's also performing in uh, a similar combine, uh, just to help get me stronger. So uh, two questions, I'll read them both, and then you guys can both answer them here. Uh, first question is, I can still, uh, can I still see muscle and strength gains if I eat my protein, but not my calories? Why or why not? And then my second question is, if I'm over my protein every day, but just under my calories, what kind of effect will that have on my performance goal uh, and in preparation for this combine. Cool. Oh yeah. Cool questions. Yeah. yeah. Really good question. Um, okay. Can you still see muscle and strength gains if the calories are too low, but the protein is high? Yes, but unlikely, especially for him. Cause yeah. he's uh, not like a newbie guy. Yeah. Right? I was going to say like somebody who's just getting started, you, you'll start to see some, you know, you can see these type of, of gains and benefits, but someone like you, um, Probably not. Now, from a performance standpoint, this may be a little different because if your performance is relying on your strength to weight ratio, sometimes you can lose weight and lose total, like a, what's called absolute strength, but actually gain relative strength, right? So let's say my deadlift go down goes down 30 pounds because I drop a bunch of body fat, but now I can do 10 more pull-ups. Well, my relative strength in the pull-up went up, my absolute strength in the deadlift went down. So, so this is going to depend on, you know, what you're getting tested for, what your performance is looking like, um, in regards to that. Now the, the second part of the question was would the low calories, but the protein affect your performance? Well, yeah, you need the calories for energy. Protein can also be used for energy, but protein, you know, think of it as like uh, repair and rebuild. But <clears throat> if your calories are too low, then your body's not going to use the protein to repair and rebuild. It's going to use it to, for energy. So even though your protein's high, now your body's burning it for energy because it's not getting enough energy from carbohydrates or fats. And it's not an ideal source. It would yeah. rather have. And it's not yeah. a great source of energy. Uh, carbohydrates are yeah. much better. So calories yeah. matter too. So you want to hit those calories uh, as well yeah, as I the want, Yeah, protein. I want to find out. You said you're running a program that your friend gave you. Like, What does that entail? What does that look like? What does your week schedule of workouts look like? Okay, so uh, this week has been, will be consistent. Um, so- uh, it's an upper lower split. I'm doing basic compound movements. Um, yesterday was a lower, it was a leg day. I mean, hang clean squats, RDLs. And then today will be upper body, um, you know, shoulders back, a um, little bit of arms and then another lower body day. So four days a week lifting. I was, uh, following a three day a week, you know, standard, uh, full body routine. Um, so yeah. And then Tuesday, Thursdays, I'll be working with the track coach, uh, in the afternoon. 
Um, I'm actually out here in Arizona, Doug, sorry. It's Ar- I don't know what Ar- where Arkansas came from, but I'm out here in Arizona uh, <laughs> training uh, in, the heat, in the heat. So, okay. um, so and then Saturdays, uh, I'll be training as well, doing the uh, drills because I got an email from the Combine Association um, of the drills that I'll be performing. And so on every Saturday for the next six weeks, I'm six weeks out. Uh, I'll be performing or I'll be practicing those drills uh, on the weekends there. And then uh, it's looking like two, like one to two days of rest a week. Wait a minute, Giacomo, before you switched to this, you were just doing three days a week of, of full body. Yeah. So it was, it was more so it was two days. So kind of more background. I played, uh, I just finished up my semi-professional football season uh, in the league out here in Arizona and uh, Phoenix. And so we just finished uh, our last game of the season. We lost in the playoffs was on Saturday. So I was really just doing like, I was doing a unilateral, uh, unilateral program, um, that I've done before, uh, and just maintaining my strength. So this is like the first week of me actually like getting after it in the gym with my training, just cause I was in season still playing my, like I said, my semi professional season. It feels to me like you're, you're going to, you're adding too much all at once, uh, with your new routine. Cause you're going from Full body workouts in season, and then you're going to jump to four days a week yeah. strength training plus two days a week and track skill, and then you're track to add on top of that. You're going to probably burn yourself yeah. out, especially after coming out of season. Yeah, I'd probably yeah, keep the, the three day a week would have been better, or the two with. even. I would probably keep what you're doing. Yeah, go two days plus plus mm-hmm. the other two days you're going to do in the track, and that'd probably be good. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah. I mean that, and like, so what's your desired outcome? You said you wanted to gain um, like five pounds of muscle uh, before this. Like, a, like, how focused are you on performing at your highest ability for this combine? I'm, I'm giving my all into this, 150. Uh, percent I've been wanting to play pro football since I was a kid. I uh, just never kind of just, just decided to do it. Now I have nothing to lose, and so right. yeah, I'm going to give it my all, and like, obviously, want to be at the ideal weight for. My height and my like from my height and weight, and so 225 uh seemed like the solid amount, uh, just from what I've been researching myself and what from uh people have been telling me, okay? Yeah, just because I personally I know that there was a sweet spot for me in terms of being lean and being able to move as explosively as possible. Uh, and and do you know, like, so 225 that's like a range that you've you've performed in at a high level before. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this is, um, yeah, but it was about two twenty, two twenty five at the start of the season. Um, I hovered around two fifteen, two twenty during the season, uh, here in the winter, uh, and going into spring, uh, in my previous season. And so, uh, but especially it being, you know, professional football, I definitely want to make sure like my strength is mm-hmm. there, but also want to make sure that I'm also moving well and performing well right. uh, at the same time. I guess, I guess my challenge is that I know a lot of these combines, it's, it's very heavy on speed. So less so on strength and less so on, you know, your size. Uh, that's something that mm-hmm. they can build and develop while you're on the team. Like for me personally, I would lean out and try and get as fast as, as possible and explosive mm-hmm. as humanly possible. So well, and, and relative that, strength. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that benefits relative strength. Like Sal said, right. you may not have the, your best bench ever, or your best deadlift ever, but for your strength to weight ratio, I think that, and I agree with what little experience and knowledge I have of preparing somebody for something like this is that, you know, if we put too much focus and emphasis on trying to get you bigger and stronger, it could, I mean, it could affect your 40, yeah. it could affect the explosiveness, your ability to rotate and take you off. You don't have that much time, I guess, in the frame. It's like May 27th, right? So I'm just trying to think. Yeah. Yeah, logistics with that. Like, you know, I'd be as focused as possible with your speed, you know, your speed power and, and really bumping that up with your explosivity and then get a little leaner. And so you're nice, you're moving real quick yeah. out there. You would be surprised too, coming yeah. out of season, in because you're, you're playing games, you're, you're already lifting two or three days a week. You'd be surprised that you'll probably gain some muscle by doing less than versus doing more. Tu- you said Tuesday. Okay. So you were saying four days a week lifting. And then you said Tuesday and Thursday you were doing, what were you doing on those two days? The, uh, those days I'm working with the track coach for about an hour and a half. I, uh, yeah, it was last week. I had my first session with him. It was about an hour and a half t- two hour session almost. So two, uh, yeah. So two days a week, it's on the track, uh, an hour and a half to two. And then Saturdays, what was Saturdays? Saturdays is, uh, I'm working specifically on the, the combine drills. So Skills. that's like the position work itself. Bro, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to give you one day a week of strength training to add to that. 
That's it. One, two max. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that'll, that'll, pro- because you're going to, you're going to, you're going to overdo it. Yeah. Everything yeah. you're doing that you're yeah. trying to, you're going to overdo it. Mm-hmm. And I know why you're excited okay. and you're like, I want to throw everything yeah, out. Yeah. Let's, let's get it all done. But I mean, two, two, <laughs> one and a half hour to two hour days on the track outside in the heat at your size. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. The one day, and then you're doing the one day a week of the the combine all drills, skills, which skills is trains. a lot. Yeah, explosive. I mean, mm-hmm. one day a week of lifting is what I would probably do, especially coming out of season. And it would be a basic compound lift day where I'm doing like four or five exercises, five by five, nothing to failure, just focusing on technique form and getting, you know, trying to get stronger. And that's where I would start. Yeah. yeah. You can always add more, okay. but that's where I would start. Yeah, I hear what you guys are saying. I'm definitely one to like, I love the gym and I've you know been lifting yeah. since that. So I'm, I'll be 28 actually in a week and I've been lifting since I was 14. And I love, I've grown a passion for obviously training and like, I love being in the gym. I love it, but I'm not like one. To, I know when I'm over training and I know when I'm like under training at the same time. It just feels like obviously been in season. I just feel like I'm an under training and like, I want to gain strength. And like, it felt good to get after it in the gym yesterday. And like my body feels it feels relatively good uh, coming out of season this last game, but I hear what you guys are saying. And so I definitely, obviously I'm going to listen to you guys because I believe and trust you guys a hundred percent. And so, uh, yeah, I think, I think that sounds good. Two days a week is actually will probably be, per- will definitely be perfect. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. And then, and then if you want to do extra stuff, do you have maps prime pro? Do you have our mobility stuff? So I do not. However, Adam, don't freak out. I've been following. I've followed the Maps Prime Pro and <laughs> Prime webinar. Okay. Uh, All I've, right. You get a pass. <laughs> you get a pass. I'm gonna send. Yeah. You, so, I'm gonna send you Prime Pro, so you'll have some mobility stuff you can do if okay. you want to just do more stuff. Yeah, yeah. That that'll be that'll be perfect. I've definitely uh, even with the Prime Pro webinar, I'll refer back to it with not only myself or even show my clients, send it to them if they need some extra stuff, but I, I prime with that before every lift. I do the combat stretch the 90, 90, all that fun stuff. So awesome. and then uh, if, I really do. I really do appreciate it guys. You guys rock. Yeah. And then if yeah, you want to, if you want to pick uh, us up at the airport, we'll be there in about five, six yeah. hours. Yeah. yeah we're so. coming, we're coming <laughs> out Hey, there. I got you. Hey, no, for real. I got you guys. Adam wants to race. I, I, Adam, I saw your Instagram story actually earlier before I hopped on. So you guys are going to be in Phoenix for a couple days. Seeing Jason is hot. Bring your sunscreen. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I, all I brought. I'll was be lathered up. Booty, dude, booty shorts and tank tops. Yeah. That's all I brought. So yeah. we're good to go. Yeah, man. Good. Absolutely. Hey, appreciate you guys. Honestly, yeah, yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Hey, best yeah. of luck. Hey, do you keep us posted, yeah. please? Keep us posted on, yeah. on how the training's going yeah, and stuff like that. I'd love, it, I'd love to hear how it goes. Yeah, 100%. We'll do just uh, through the email here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That'd be the best way. Yeah. They'll make sure it gets awesome. to us. Sounds great. Yeah, we'll do, guys. Thanks I, again. You got it, man. Thank you. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot. It was, he was adding up all the stuff he was doing. I'm like, oh, yeah, and to Justin's lot, point, we, we, this is such a short notice that you don't want to try and no. make those huge. So moves what, are they, that what are you looking at in the in the comp? Because I heard your comment, Bird, Justin. It's, cut the forty like shuttle all the, run. It's all spo- it is all shuttle speed, run. Man. It's all running. It's all there's a bench press. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, but I that mean, doesn't weigh that much. No, it, it's it, they're uh, again like yeah. The coaches aren't looking for that because if you look at it from a coaching perspective, like what can you build yeah. in the off season yeah. with your athlete? That's right. What yeah. you can't build is speed. That's right. And rea- like reactive, like being quick. Like yeah, no. And speed is what wins games. Like these athletes don't understand. Like yeah. if you just get faster and like more explosive, everything else you can build with. Hundred percent, bro. If he, if he, I, he did his, obviously did his research and saw that probably the you know average best NFL guy at, at his positions two twenty five at whatever. It's like they, if they see him, mm-hmm. they'd rather see him at two ten and fucking blow everyone out Just, the door speed wise. Yes. And because they know first that, to the ball, because they'll know like, oh, but oh, this guy's about ten pounds underweight. We can put it, we can bulk him up in the off season yeah. and mm-hmm. put some weight on yeah. him if, if he's got natural speed. Yeah, and, that makes like, sense. Yeah, totally. So I agree with you, especially with this short of notice too. Like we would, we're we're more likely to fuck him up by trying to add a bunch of strength and weight yeah, to him. Yeah, it's going to slow him down. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. If you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have free guides that can help you with a lot of health and fitness goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Stefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 